post-conference session with uh, Master Healer Ron Anatron, and I know you're already very familiar with his amazing work, and you're going to learn so much more and have incredible experiences today. So thank you so much. Ron. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So let's get our energy up. So what we can do is everybody can stand. I'll just stay seated. And what we want to do is a little exercise, which is, I guess I could stand too, I guess, here. <laughs> so what we want to do is, how you doing, Ted? Okay. So you want to put your hands and move them forward. And you're going to feel like an invisible ball tension at some place between the palm of your hands like a little spring, mm -hmm. and then you want to say out loud, I now increase my life force energy. So increase, increase my life force energy. energy. Okay, move your hands apart, and then come in again, and you're going to feel that ball tension a little bit larger. Say it again. I, I now increase, increase my life force energy, energy, and further apart. And say it again. I, I now, now increase, increase my, my life force, force energy. energy. And further apart. And come in. I now, now increase, increase my, my life force, force energy. energy. And again. I, I now, now increase my life force, force energy. I now, now increase my life force, force energy. I now, now increase my life force energy. energy. I now increase my life force energy. And two more times. I now increase my life force energy. I now increase my life force energy. Okay, we can sit down. So that you can do all the time. And we got a seat over here, maybe. Or you can go over here. So that's a neat trick to do. It brings more spirit energy into you. If you do it uh, 50 times, 100 times, you're going to feel your body kind of maybe even shake inside because you're releasing some blockages. Uh, one person said they did it for a 1,000 times, and they felt like they were really flying high, not like, you know, just really, really buzzing. So it's, it's a good trick. It's, if you're driving your car at night and it's 3 in the morning, you have to get home or something, you know, and you're really, really tired, just say it out loud. You don't need to do your hands like this, okay? I wouldn't hear. No, I'm good. I'm good, yeah. So you don't have to move your hands. Yeah. So you don't have to move your hands, but it's good just to kind of sample it at first to see where you are with your energy. Can you, and use your body. Some people try to go like this here, and they try to feel it, you know. It's not the same. Just, just let your body tell you where your energy field is. Yes? Your feet were opening up? Yeah, because I have poor circulation in my feet, and I could just feel this energy just pouring down my feet. It's the weirdest feeling. Okay, great. So you had energy going down. So it goes from your heart and kind of expands out. Yeah. And the more you say it, the, the better it's going to be for you. Yes, question? Can we get a copy of the tape afterwards, or do we have to take notes? Uh, they are videoing it, so it may be, uh, you know, out there, maybe half an hour or so after, I think. Okay. Now, let's see here. Taking notes is good, too. Okay. Uh, what else do you need to know? Uh, oh, now what's your energy? Now this, this, that's your spirit energy. This is not your auric field of your body. So we have two basic different energies with us. We have our body energy, which is your auric field, which works off of your cell memory. Okay, so when you expand that, that, that's how people do uh, readings on people. Uh, a beginner reader or even a person who does readings, a lot of times they will connect with somebody else's body and find out what their problem is. It's like an empath, okay? You walk into a room and you go, I got a shoulder ache. Well, because somebody else had one, so you're, you're resonating with that shoulder ache. So if you become a reader, you can say, oh, you have a shoulder ache, right? So you don't really want to do that. You want to actually probably use your third eye for readings more than your, your body energy or maybe even second chakra. So that might help some of you out here if you are doing that. But it's not good to connect to somebody else's body. Okay. Now, when you're out and about, you want to take your energy of your body, and what I use the word is shrink wrapping. So you want to shrink wrap your body energy right to your skin. Otherwise, you're putting out this field of energy, 
and as people walk in and out of that field, they're giving you their stuff. Okay? You understand that, huh? Yeah. Okay. And then you're giving them your stuff. So if you shake hands with somebody, and somebody is at, say, uh, maybe you're at a number, say, I'm trying to pick a number, number, number eight, you feel really good. And somebody now that you're shaking hands with, maybe he's at maybe, say, a four, right? You shake hands, well, they're going to be popped up to maybe a six, and you're going to drop, they're going to say, oh, thank you so much, but they won't tell it to you. <coughs> and they're going to drop down to, to a six and go, wow, I feel kind of tired. What happened? So they stole your energy from you. Now, other things happen as you touch people. So I don't recommend uh, shaking hands or hugging, okay? The reason is because inside of us, we have energetic parasites that you cannot physically see, and these are alien parasitic life forms, and they body hop. So that gets to be a whole other agenda, but we all have these inside of us. I do eight-hour conference calls on Sundays for this to get people released from a lot of these things. Uh, I've been doing this for probably a couple of years, I believe, and people start feeling better and better. So what I'll do for you is start off with the octopus energy that you have inside of you, and we'll get rid of the tentacles. Am I loud enough for everybody? Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, the, the octopus energy is normally uh, rest, you know, in your abdominal area, and their their tentacles kind of wrap around you, around your throat, that they can compress your lungs. You don't know why you're not breathing too well someday, and all of a sudden, this happens. So let's, let's take out one of the tentacles here. And, and you could have 50 of these, but I'll get rid of a couple of them, okay? So first tentacle is out, second one, third, fourth, and you kind of take note of your breathing. Fifth, six, seven, eight, okay? Now we'll get rid of the poison that, poisons that this one gave you. So here we go. <coughs> let's start taking it out. I use my hands a lot for what I do. Okay, so if you see me doing this, that's what I'm doing, flicking off energies. And it doesn't go to anybody, so if I flick it this way, don't worry. <laughs> you won't get it. <laughs> and here we go. Poisons are out. How are you people feeling? Is your body energy changing? Okay, now we're going to get out their waste products. Remember, they eat to eat, right? <laughs> what comes in goes out. Okay. There we go. And from there, we have dead carcasses. Now, much like humans or, or life here, you know, uh, the dead carcasses are either from old age and they die inside of you, don't get retrieved, or you have alien wars inside of you with these critters and they kill each other. So let's get out the dead carcasses here. Quite a few in some of you. And so the waste products, uh, well the, well, the race products and poisons and the carcasses can give you inflammation, okay? There, that's out. Everybody stand up and just see how you are feeling. Do you feel a little lighter? Can you breathe better? Any more, you know, physical uh, movement that you have in, internally? Okay. Anybody want to comment on what they're sensing? And you can sit down again. Lightness. Of Lightness. <coughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to work with your, your heart and your lungs, then we'll, we'll get into alien stuff too, which is what I talk about, but uh, I'll get that out there. Maybe got a tentacle in there. Here we go, coming out. There we go. <laughs> Open big. <laughs> okay, there we go. Perfect. We got them. Got them. We got them. Okay. <laughs> Got some, need some water? Okay. Okay, so let's see. What, what was I talking about before? <coughs> yeah, and after that? Shrink wrapping, okay. What's that? Heart and lungs. Okay, here we go. So as you get older, things kind of go south, sag, you know. <laughs> and. So, so does your body organs. <coughs> okay, so here we go. I'm going to work with your, your uh, right lung. I'm going to reposition that for you here. 
I'm going to raise it up a little bit. And it could be, you know, different positions inside of your body. You might actually feel this going on, okay? This is right lung, okay, left lung. Okay. And heart, move that a little bit here. That feels good. Anybody feel a, a movement inside the bodies? Okay. Feels lighter. Feels lighter, okay. Take a deep breath. And inhale, exhale to see if that's helped you. <coughs> I feel like a block was moved from the heart. Okay, good. Heart blockage released, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, let's. Uh, anybody have any pain in their bodies? Okay, let's see if we can get rid of some pain energy. So just kind of, uh, you know. Put attention to where your pain is here. Focus on it a little bit. You may want to put your hand there if you have it too. Some people like to do that. They go, oh, I got a pain here. And here we go, taking away this energy if I can. There we go, it's helping somewhat. We get rid of entities. Now remember, entities are emotional bodies that get attracted to you according to your situation. So let's release some entities here. They remember, like attracts like here, okay? So if you have a shoulder problem, so do entities. They recognize that situation, and they all come right to you and attach to you. And then you're wondering why you can never heal, because the entities are living off of your life force energy, okay? And they're taking all your healing properties away from you. Your entities are being released, and this should help you out quite a bit here. <coughs> Okay, there. H how's your pain doing? Is it a little bit less? Yes, it is less. Less? The pain is yeah. less. I have a tightness happening in my throat. A tightness around your throat? Okay, that could be uh, uh, one of the uh, squid energies. So let's get rid of the squids here. This may sound kind of foreign to most of you, but here we go. Get rid of the squid energies. So in the ocean, we have the, basically, the main two are the octopus and the squids that attach to people. No, they, they just come in here as a life form. And so we see their physical counterpart, and we identify that as being real. Then they also have their energetic ones that come in. <coughs> then we have the jellyfish, too. That's the, probably the, the worst. Jellyfish. Jellyfish? Jellyfish energies. Okay. Okay, get rid of the body now. Okay. There. How's that feel? That, that help you? Okay, now we'll get rid of the, the poisons that they may have given you. Okay. And next we'll get rid of the waste products. So I do this for eight hours on Sundays, taking these things out like this here. We're on the telephone on a conference call line. So I'm moving all my hands around like this here as I'm working with people. Okay. And next we'll get rid of the uh, dead carcasses. Okay. How's that? Good. Good? So you can have a problem internally or some kind of uh, owie or something or condition, not know what it is, try to treat it with something, but you can't see it. And then you get this stuff released and you go, wow, I feel better. What's happening, you know? And that's what it is. Yes? This thing that I have is a mycoplasma. Plasm. It, 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 I get rid of it with the equipment that I use and I feel great for a couple of days and then it just reforms again. Okay, <coughs> let me see what, uh, so this is more of a breathing congestion, lung congestion, uh, uh, is it sinus, or what would you call it? it? It seems to be sinus going into, um, it seems to be sinus going in, <coughs> into lungs. I breathe very deeply because I'm a yogi, and it's way down here. Okay, <coughs> so we can pull some stuff out of you here.
<coughs> she knows there's no need to touch anybody. I very seldom actually physically touch people when I do healings. I do it once in a while, but very, very seldom. if that helps, okay? Very energy, thank you. Okay. Okay, so we could talk about uh, uh, problems that we have here with humanity, with the aliens coming in, okay? Anybody have any questions about aliens or I just talk loud? Just uh, first, I think I missed the first few minutes, but um, when I came in, you are saying basically shrink wrap, or shrink wrap our energy field and not you know, handshake and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, whenever you touch somebody, you're exchanging yeah, energies. Yeah, the energy body, kind of subtle body, is what I'm really kind of interested in, because recently I've been much more um, sensitive and much more even, like, scared to even, like, being, not scared, but just, like, I don't want to be messing with the information in the field through non-temperance of my own mind, and, you know, uh, basically... Basically, like I just I want to keep people's energies the way it is and not, you know, have any type of influence on that. Okay. Knowingly or unknowingly. So, and then I just think to myself, it's like not human to be scared to touch and contact. Okay. Like, yeah. It, it, are, it's okay. Yeah. When you touch somebody, you are taking on their energy system and everything that's attached to them. So what we have is emotional bodies that are invisible. People die. Uh, the spirit uh, hangs around, maybe we'll just say for a month, that looks out of the eyes and wants to check with his family members. It could be longer, but a month is about the normal time, okay? And then the dark side catches the spirit. You go through that beautiful white light tunnel, <coughs> see whatever you believe in there, see your ancestors, your parents. Then they have to decontaminate your spirit because, see, you're only useful to the aliens as far as them taking energy from you when you have a vital spirit because they suck that energy off of it. If you've seen the movie Number Nine, okay, it's, it's a good movie about that. This, this uh, physical man made these little puppets. I think he made nine of them. And each one of these uh, puppets had part of his spirit inside of the puppet. So we divided it off maybe into nine parts, okay? And then this uh, like alien spider creature would come and they were all in fear of this because it would find these little puppets and suck out the spirit and the puppet would die. Little figurine that he made. So you could check that out. It's a perfect movie to, to understand what's happening. So these invisible life forms, which we call aliens around us, are here and they take away our life force energy. And the life force energy that they take is from your spirit energy. And so whenever you start to touch somebody, that energy can be taken from you, your spirit energy. And also you can have the entities of people who've died, emotional bodies taken away from you also. And they can reattach to you, I mean, and then they can take your energy and leave. So I'll do an entity release. So let's just pick, uh, we'll just do knees. So we'll see if you have anything attached to your knees. Here we go. So work on your, your right knee first. And let's say that you banged your knee when you were 10 years of age. They can still be with you. Then they have their own agenda of their whole storyline from that time frame and they give it to you. So now their thoughts, since it's an emotional energy, uh, can, af can affect your life, okay? Your, your emotional energy is your driving power that you normally have. Your, your spirit's peaceful. And if you notice when people get, you know, upset, riled up or something, that's the emotional energy coming forward, okay? How's, there, okay, right, uh, right knee, I'll do left knee. There we go. So these are like attachments, you can call them ghosts, and they just <coughs> attach to you. There. Your knees feel a little bit lighter? Yes. Uh, I was, can I go back to his question? Right? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, so um, I guess I have a two-part question. 
Okay. Um, so, like he said, as as humans, we, I guess, because we talk like we do, or we think we need that connection. interaction connection. So, like, you you hug your kids or you have sex, like. Do you just not have to do that, or <laughs> like I mean, I'm just saying, do you shrink wrap yourself? Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm well, sure it's that. a good question. That, that it's hard to say how to answer that one. Okay. Very hard to answer. Oh, yeah, the energy off your body um, under those circumstances after you've had contact. Because I'm especially with sex. I'm sure yeah, you could take right. up lots of nonsense. Yeah, and that's what the aliens like. <laughs> you don't want to be a slut. <laughs> So yeah, that, that's all the time, anyway. that, yeah. That's just well, speak for yourself. <laughs> so uh, a little promiscuous and then fall off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Get on the Friday night call. Yeah. Yeah. So so, kind of going along with that slightly, you, you could be an entity child. Okay. So let's just uh, say that. Your ancestors, maybe your great great grandmother and grandfather, right, are hanging around, right? The emotional bodies, not their spirit, but the emotional bodies are here. And they go, boy, we need a body to come into. So they set the whole scheme up, and voila, baby pops out, right? And now they have a body that they can hop into and live. <coughs> Not their spirit, so just their the emotion. Spirit comes in? Yeah, the regular spirit comes in, the regular process happens, but they claim that body. Remember, you, and the emotions drive that body. So that's like a possession. Yeah, it's like a p possession. That's what it would be, yes, uh huh. You're being possessed by your ancestors. And they created you, or they were in the act of creating you. Is it likely to be from your soul family? It could be from your cell family, or it could be somebody else entirely coming in. But but the cell family that you're connected with would have special energetic codes that would align with them, making it easier for them to attach to you during that process. Why would they want to do that, though? If it's like oh, oh, an emotional body. Okay, let's just say that we have have this room filled full of people. Okay, and. They want to body hop into you. They want to share this experience of sitting in this seat. And they could do that. They could just do a body hop and hop in. So emotional bodies, ghosts, do that all the time. It, it's very, very common. Why can't they do it on their own? Well, they, they, they need the life force energy. And the life force energy is what they're taking away from you. So they have to get get involved with somebody, something, to take the energy. Then I would imagine that some people say when they go into like a quote quote haunted house, and you know their blood kind of curls or their hair stands up on the end. Well, you're probably being attached at that time. Okay, maybe you might think that oh, there's something out there. You're detecting something. You know, 50 feet away. Well, they could have already attached to you, taken away your energy. So why would you get cold? Crazy. Because they've already they're sucking it out of you. I wanted to ask you, you started saying that when the people go over and they go into the light. Yes, yeah, when they go into the light. That's the light of the darkness. Okay, but the the aliens are on the other side? When oh yeah, 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 everything okay. Yes, everything that is uh, source energy uh, you never go to because you already have it inside of you. So you're in a sense like a free spirit, okay, to experience life. So when you go down that white light tunnel, that's what people talk about from near-death experiences or a death experience, and then they got revived again, okay. Uh, your spirit is completely contaminated when your body dies typically, okay. We'll just talk about old age, okay. <coughs> so because your spirit now uh, looks like an emotional body, it has to be decontaminated and stripped of all the emotions from that lifetime that you had. So that you could call, what people call anyway, your past life review. You've heard about that and you see the whole storyline of your whole life. Well, why do they play that out? See, 
they're taking away those emotions out of your out of your spirit. You could use the word soul. Okay. So spirit is like uh, slightly different, maybe, but uh, you're, you're here it's soul because your soul goes through reincarnations. In true light, it's spirit. I always talk about spirit. Okay. So we'll just use the word soul. So your soul now is forced into reincarnations. And uh, normally you come back because of unfinished business, right, of some sort. And that's the game that the aliens do for you. So now you get dumped into a, another body that's completely corrupted, probably even worse than your last body that you were in, right, because it takes some time to have this deprogramming process. And you do have... Uh, in a sense, a choice because you select your, your your parents, the worst, you know, the best of the worst. Okay, so you do pick parents according to the DNA of the the parents, and you hope that that DNA you could use as a, as a spirit, as your soul, to come forward in this lifetime to have talents with. Right? That's that's basically it. Okay. Well, since the parents didn't decontaminate themselves. That child's going to now be filled full of their contamination, plus their grandparents going back to the get-go. So each, each person that's born here is more contaminated than their parents. So you get a body that's worse than the one before, typically. Because I don't know anybody who has worked on themselves who've had a child. You know, you know anybody who's 60, 70 years of age who has a child who worked on themselves to get rid of all their emotional dramas and traumas? Uh, I don't know of anybody. Normally, you know, you're conceived typically in lust, you know. <laughs> that one night stand or, you know, whatever happens is some people do want to have a child, but uh, they still haven't worked on themselves to, get, to shed themselves of all the garbage that they picked up in their lifetime to make the child more pure. So then the child then mimics the parents. And really, you're probably resonating more with the grandparents than you are with, the, with your parents. Normally, it skips one generation. So every time someone is born, they're worse off than the ones before. So the system here is a complete setup. It's a, it's a really you know, uh, incredible scheme what they did to all of you because you can't get out of it each time you get worse. So you go back there and you go, oh, you know, you stepped on uh, an ant, you hurt somebody, you did a car wreck, you know, and now you got to go see and be in this family where you paralyze somebody. So you come in, maybe you have a similar situation done to you, and you go through that same process over again, and then they tell you as you go to a reader, well, you're here because you have this problem. This is your karma. And you go, yeah, it probably is. It feels like it could be right, you know. And you try to get yourself out of it, and each day that you live, you have more thoughts, and those thoughts are now contaminating your body. Okay, each time you have a thought, it's being stored inside of you. And whatever you read, whatever you see, and now you're getting more gunked up each day that you live. So, I hope it doesn't sound too depressing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you want to shed yourself of these things. Yes? So, if you <coughs> shed yourself of these things in one life, as opposed to shed ourselves of this life, in this life, does that mean that we don't come back? Or no, no. <coughs> Your only way, <coughs> you're on a planet that was created from light. Get some water here. <clears throat> and, and this planet was created from the Earth spirit. Or many Earth spirits from light. <clears throat> the one that w used to be here was here for about, I think, 1.4 million years. Before that, another spirit was here. But I won't get into that. It gets just too complicated. That's about all, all that I know on that knowledge, okay, information. What about the veil they put uh, I don't know about the veil. The veil could have been earth protection, possibly, but uh, we can talk about it a little, little bit later, maybe. So, the earth spirit that's here is, is here, and this, this planet was created from light. And then the darkness crept in, and then bodies were, were put into here at some point. So everybody here is from a different alien race. And maybe they just changed our skin color, basically. And, but they did change our heads, okay? So I'd imagine that if we had everybody's head cut off and we took the skin off, we'd probably be all very, very similar. So they got one master blueprint of the humans, okay? 
And so each alien race that came in here had their own way of depicting their genetic strain. And that's, that can be controlled, you know, with uh, energy from that particular alien race. So let's just say that you're hypothetically uh, a, uh, a purple person, right? So you belong to the purple race. They can connect to you, uh, that purple race, and remote control you. Okay? And that's like what I talked about World War II. You have two different mindsets. You have the Japanese and you have the Germans. Two different philosophies. Short and tall people. Why didn't they get two short races, right? T two Asian races together, right? But different. Different mindsets completely, right? Uh, of two different <coughs> cultures. So the two alien races out there in the Beyondo got together and wanted to take over the planet. They made a pact, whatever. Remote controlled those people. Remember, nobody really wants to kill anybody here, right? You don't think of getting up each day with a gun and shoot people, but yet they programmed them to kill people through whatever happened down here. Oh, I'm sorry, Ron. What was that? Who programmed to kill? What was that? Would you repeat that? Yeah, yeah. The alien races would program the people down here that they belonged to, that, that they brought here with their genetics in it. Okay, so the, your genetics is what's being programmed by them. Yeah, uh-huh. So whatever, whatever happened that way, it just, you know, it happened. So we have, yes, go ahead, yes, question? I want to imagine that some of um, our um, alien friends out there have something to do with good, or oh, okay. just a complete prison planet takeover? Yeah, it, it's, okay, it's, uh, I use the term as above, so below. So we're in the below, right? And there's an alien race above us in the above, or an energy system, right? With many, many races, right? Just th think of all the, the, the stars you see up there blinking at night. That, that could be an alien uh, spaceship, okay? Or it just could be a hologram, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> but, and then they're in the same system as above, so below. So what's controlling them? So the main premise for the aliens is control, to take over something. And so what do we have here? We're above, we're above the animals here, right? you know, that people in grasses and things that we eat, right? So we're above that, and we're, you know, above the planet if we want to chop down trees or killing trees, right? So you see what I mean? So it just depends where you are in consciousness. But the whole thing is still control. Right. Okay, so source energy is peace. So what you have is manipulation and control. And if you're in duality, they're in duality. So if they're in duality, you're going to hear about them because they're in duality too. They, they brought themselves forward in a duality system connecting to you or, or connecting to people who are are channeling that information, okay? And so, probably more recently, we start hearing the names of those alien races, maybe the last 50 years or so, right? And we get names to them. People channel, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't know what it would be. But you wouldn't know what an Arcturian was, hypothetically, right? Until somebody channeled, and somebody taps somebody in the show, and says, hey, I'm an Arcturian. I want to channel information to you. So now that name becomes widespread throughout you know, humanity. So we have all these races that we typically know about. And they all look different. Have you seen Arturians? They look like Gumby. <coughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of them. Most I don't remember, but I, I've seen, have seen lots, yeah. If somebody dies and an entity is removed from that body, <coughs> does the light take it to uh, the new Earth? Or instead of the no, no the, the, the light doesn't do anything. So as far as getting out of here, which was his question, if you work on yourself, can you get out of here? Well, if you're in light completely, you can leave whenever you choose to. Okay, but you're not in a planet of, of uh, you're in a planet of light, but you're being controlled by darkness here. So the aliens brought in darkness with mind energy to control you, robotic programs, okay? And they're doing that to 
tell you what to do and to have your body work a certain way. And I'll take some programs off of you in, in about five minutes here. So that's the whole process is that you're in a state of uh, living here thinking that you have light with you, which is your spirit. A lot of people, when you hear them talk, they go, oh, my higher self, right? You've probably seen speakers talk about that, my higher self. Well, what are they pointing to out there? Everything's with you. Anything outside of yourself is going to be suspect to being of darkness as you try to bring it into you. That's why a baby that does not have the ability to maybe think consciously, to use the mind energy, to have words, etc., okay? They're full of light. Once the baby starts to understand communication, then they're in the trap of mind, and then they get programs. So you go to school, basically, and then you learn how to live here, learn how to get a job, right? You're on a program now, and you lose your light because the program takes away the light that would normally be with you, or, or the, saying it a little differently, the program goes into your cellular memory, which gets activated, and you lose the light. And when you lose part of that light, your spirit leaves you, a little piece of your spirit leaves. So if you took a baby, they're all very bright, right? When you see babies, they kind of like glow. And you see the same child, maybe when age of 10, are they glowing? No. Why? Because they're thinking. They're taught how to live robotic programs. So they switched from being uh, a source energy as much as it could be with the spirit, which is what the aliens gave you, okay? And they knew that uh, the whole process here is to get trapped into mind. So they teach everybody how to use their mind versus teaching them how to use your heart. So the two energies is heart energy, which is non-judgmental energy, which is peace. Everybody wants peace. The other one is mind energy, which is in duality. Make sense to all of you? So, we're stuck here in duality because people are choosing to think with their mind. You can't think with your heart. So the darkness, the aliens understand this, and they just switched over the system of light, how it works, universe of light, which is unlimited, unlimited consciousness. So all that you hear about the darkness, which they tell you, infinite mind, right? Well, it's, it's even more than what they're, they're giving you. Uh, in, in true light, it is definitely infinite. You can go anywhere. But here, it's limited to their consciousness of what they want to give you. And that's what they, remember, if it was infinite, then why didn't the inventors, you know, like I always say, people say, oh, the aliens are here to help us. That's the first thing that you're going to be listening to when you hear people talk who are pro-aliens, right? Oh, they're here to help us. They're going to improve the planet. Uh, you know, they go on and on, right? Well, what happened yesterday? You know, what happened to all the wars? Why do they channel to the scientists how to make the atomic bomb? You know, that isn't too good to kill people, right? Uh, why didn't they bring in, you know, one of their UFO little boxes that, uh, you know, are on their spaceships to make a car work? They could have given it to Henry Ford, right, with the Model T. What do they do? They, have them, they gave them a, a thing with pistons, you know, which runs on fossil fuel. They gave it to Tesla. Gave it to Tesla. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tesla got it. You're right. Then they killed him. Well, I think he might be still alive, but aside from that. <laughs> But uh, all this stuff is no longer, we're still trying to figure it out. So they're, they're giving us all these inventions, and why don't they give us a really good one, right? Why do we have, th this here is very confusing for me, okay? Out of nowhere, we got this stuff, in bottle, water in bottles. Well, was your water, um, I'll just ask you a question. Let's just say five years ago, okay? Was your water really that bad to drink, you know? Was it like, like from the sewer, right? Probably not, right? And now your mind controlled to buy this stuff, and your water coming out of your speaker of your house is probably the same water that it was five years ago, but yet you have to buy this here for a dollar. Yeah, but they put fluoride in it. Yeah, well, they've always had fluoride, so let's just kind of forget what, what, what could be in here. You know, you don't know. They don't tell you, really. <laughs> you know, it's supposed to be better water, right? Maybe no fluoride, but, but you don't know what's in here. That's what I'm trying to say. So all of a sudden, we got switched over from 
having tap water that you could probably put in one of these yourself if you want to go camping or something. Now everybody has to buy this stuff. It's a mind control program. Okay? So I'm just trying to give you another way of looking at it. And when I first saw that, I go, they're selling bottled water? How can they, who would want to buy bo bottled water? Not everybody buys bottled water. Everybody, yeah. So, just to, for instance there. So, so, so how do you get out of here? Okay, that's just, so how do you get out of here? Well, in, in a, if this was a true planet of light without the mind working, right, you would just, you'd, you'd first materialize the body. You don't go through the process of growing up like we do here, you know, the diapers and everything else, right, and you get older than you, eventually get old age and you croak, you know, with tubes in you, you know. So you just say, okay, I want her body. Get the blueprint of her, your spirit energizes that, and now you're her. Now you, you do what you want to do, decide to leave, you know, take the spirit out, and now she's collapsed, the blueprint is no longer living. That's how light works, okay? So you can't do that here. So unfortunately, because you're tapped into a system that's controlled by extraterrestrials, the light had to come in here and make uh, 2,000 year points of time to leave here. A forced way that they turn off the universe of light, which, which is ascension, I call it the universal shift. There's, there's a lot of information out there on ascension, most of it is probably not correct. They, they want you to smile and be nice and help people out. That's not going to help you because you have to clean your body out. So the whole thing is, you know, if you get back to what Jesus taught, which, who was doing ascension, he took away people's sins, which is your genetic programming inside of your body so your spirit can come more fully into you. And then you leave when the universe of light turns off the energy. Everything becomes darkness. I don't want to use that term in a sense, but there's nothing there. Nothing's lit up. Okay? And then everything goes back to the light, and then you start over again. So they put that in place because the darkness energies was creeping into the light, like we have here, uh, and that's the way you can leave. So you have, t every 2,000 years, you have a chance to leave here. On a true planet of light, you can go whenever you want to. Yes, we are. When? I don't know when that's going to be. <coughs> so yeah, I, I thought uh, when I first started doing this work to help people do emotional clearings to clean out their body, uh, that was basically in 2005. And they said you're going to have about, you're going to have three years. So with their time plan, and they don't live in time, but they, I don't know how to d describe this because the light is in the moment. Okay, but they said three years and, you know, you'll be done in 2008. So for myself, I thought, well, 2008, I'll probably be leaving here, but I didn't really put any emphasis on it. And it came, I started in February, 2000 to February came. I go, well, it's been three years, what's up? Well, humanity's not awoken yet. So they probably thought, in a sense, using the word thought, okay, which may not be correct from light, but they probably figured, well, we got the Internet. I'm doing healings, going to different locations. Somebody's going to see that. I'll be going into, you know, stadiums with 50,000 to 500,000 people, uh, auditoriums, and I'll be doing these clearings. That's what they sort of thought. Well, it didn't work out. Darkness was too thick here. Okay? So, that's how you leave here. You clean out your body. When ascension time comes, you can clean your body. So you can ascend different ways. You can get your spirit out of here which I'd highly recommend doing uh, because since, uh, well, this is going to make you not feel too well. <laughs> this is the bad news, okay? Brace yourself. The air spirit left here, okay? Well, we're, my, my role here is to help the air spirit because it's a gigantic spirit for the planet. The people are secondary, okay? So I've been working with the air spirit for years trying to collect its parts that was stolen by the aliens. Uh, how did the earth spirit get stolen? Well, people pray, pre people bring in energies outside of themselves. I mentioned about the harmonic convergence. So whatever people are doing here, 
connecting to an energy, channeling, whatever it is, they're opening up these little wormhole vortexes, stargates, allowing the aliens to come in here. That's why we have ship clouds now all around, the flat bottom clouds, okay? They're doing mind control patterns on people and stuff. So, and probably even abductions. But aside from that, the people caused the problem here. So the Earth spirit, I think, was 23% whole that we could find. The rest of it is in the beyond or someplace. Can't find it. The light doesn't know darkness. And the light never created darkness. And the darkness never created light. Two different energies completely. So the Earth spirit left. It, uh, I think it left uh, a year ago last October. Is that correct, Angeli? I believe that's correct, okay? All of a sudden, one day, looked around, it was back in New York, and all the trees looked dead. They're still living, but they look dead. No life force. And they had a transparent look, yeah. It was like looking into a hologram. Their spirit pulled out. We finally did all the work on it we could possibly find, and it, it left. Just doing its ascension right now. Well, it's, it's just kind of like in quarantine, getting fixed, okay? And so, it's no longer here. Now, your body is made out of earth elements, right? And the earth elements was charged by the earth spirit. Make sense to you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so if the earth spirit is no longer here, and you get taken sideways at ascension time, like what happened 2,000 years ago and 2,000 years ago before that, remember these are parallel lives, they just shift you off of here to the dark side universes, look just like this here, right? And the light gets turned off here, but over there it's still lit. Before you got shifted back to here because your body could live off of the earth energy again, right, and get rejuvenated. Well, the earth spirit's not going to re-energize this planet. So where are they going to take you? That's why this time is the most crucial time for humanity, you know, period, for this planet's evolution. It's no longer going to be here. Another earth spirit could take this exact same blueprint of all the trees and the water, uh, maybe redo it so it's not corrupted, but it won't be resonating to you. You know, it could look the same. But you'd be able to adapt to it, right? No, you can't live anywhere else. It'd be like your body going to Mars or the moon or anywhere else. It doesn't, that won't exist. It can't live off anything else but but the elements that it was created from. So they're gone. They're gone. The earth spirit's gone, so your energy source for your body will no longer be here. That's why they're not in here. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah. that's why Can you call for some that's that's why why I, so It's really good out of here. I, I can't, it's been very hard for me to let go surfing because I don't feel like anything's there. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, that, she just keyed me into the next part. <laughs> Here we go. So, yeah, I, I uh, doing some, some energetic uh, physical battles with the aliens uh, a few months ago. I, I pushed my ascension button. I didn't want to go through any more of this crap because I've been through a lot of it. Okay, my body's been having, you know, uh, it does have troubles, you know. So I said, that's it, let's go. Well, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> the wire, the battery died on it, you know, like, oh, shit, didn't come on, you know, didn't transmit. So we're, we're stuck here for a while, probably because I'm fighting aliens all the time. But we'll, we'll get into uh, 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 clones now. Okay. So what happened in December of last year on the 21st, say the 20th, 21st, 22nd, right? That was the end, we'll say, of the Mayan calendar. And this I talk about in some of the lectures, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, before you go any further, I just wanted to clarify. So the heart energy is what? It's source uh, energy. Heart. Source energy, which is sovereign energy. Which Unique to yourself. Our spirit parts and it just be out of here. Yeah, yeah. Your spirit, yeah. What I have on my website is a spirit barcode. Remember, the light doesn't, doesn't interact with you. Some people will think that, you know, or you're taught anyway, you go to church, right, and you pray to God and that God is connected to you, and then you pay your money, and then you ask for a favor, <laughs> right? And hopefully you get blessed by 
this God energy that uh, everybody's praying to us, some other alien race that's connected to you, but that's, that's that system. Well, source energy doesn't work that way. It doesn't need your money. It doesn't want anything from you. It needs just you to go out and experience life. And that's what life is like, you know, in source energy. You just have an experience, an expression, and you energize that expression. It doesn't keep track of anything. There's no real records of life because it works in the now. Everything is in the now. See, like I said, the setup with the aliens that gave you DNA has a history, okay? Or, or a her story, right? And so you have th this energy stored inside of you of all of your thoughts, which is what they're, they're doing to keep tabs on you and keeps you caught into the loop. So source energy doesn't care what you do, doesn't judge you. Your spirit's with you to help to do what it wants to do, which is be creative. That's all that it's here to do. And then it also can look out of your eyes to see situations. But your emotional body drives you, okay? Let's say that you want to just right now to, uh, uh, to walk over to that wall over there, okay? Is your spirit telling you to do that? typically not, but your emotions are. Maybe you saw, let's just say that you looked over there and you saw a hundred dollar bill. The spirit's going to go, oh, piece of paper basically, doesn't know what it is. What's your emotions going to do? Up, oh, see a hundred dollar bill. Anybody else looking at it, right? Here, <laughs> <laughs> grab it, right? So that's your emotions. Your emotions drive your body. And then your mind also drives your body, but mainly it's the emotions. So the mind triggers the emotions. And the mind's from the aliens, okay? Your spirit's peaceful. So is that like your subconscious? Uh, I can't really say it's your subconscious, okay? Because there's... Well, where is your subconscious from? From the aliens? Everything here that is dealing with mind is from that, yes. So you can say subconscious mind, yes. That would be the alien energies, yeah. And it could be something stored deeply inside of you coming out. Okay? So you have active DNA that you're using now because you were you were taught how to live here that brought up your learning experiences which would be in your natal chart because everybody reads that around like, like your soul family and that triggers you to do certain things so that now you're on this path of whatever it would be but they, you never get on your path you never yeah and, and the true path is nothing and Just, the, what? the true path is nothing in light there's no, there's no agenda. There's no judgment. There's no duality. So you have people saying, well, I got tapped on my shoulder that I need to be a healer. I need to do this and need to do that. Well, that's just something telling you, hey, you're off your path. We want to, we're trying to control you to do this here. Be a healer. Kill yourself after 40, 50, 60 years. You know, you have this gift. We'll give you this gift to do something. So that's what happens. But I would even question that, like anything coming outside of you. Anything outside of yourself is suspect. Yeah, suspect of darkness. Yep. So like even her saying like, oh, hey, have, get us some help. You know, get us some help to get out of here. It's like, no, it's not even outside of you. It's only in you. It's in you. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, we're all so, here to help. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Here to help. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. No so, uh, you, you mentioned the, the spirit. You, you said earlier to get our spirits mm. out of here. Get your spirit what? Get our spirit. If you were us, we should get our spirits out of here. Yeah, you want to get your spirits out of here, yeah. Get out of the reincarnation cycle that is part of the alien agenda that we're trapped in. Um, to do that, you just mentioned to go to your website. There's a spirit barcode. Yeah, I have a spirit barcode, yeah. Okay, so his question is how do you get out of here? <coughs> Let's just say that uh, hypothetically uh, uh, something happened and, and uh, all of you died in... in five hours from now, and you had your spirit barcode done, okay? And, uh, and it wasn't ascension time. Maybe the roof just collapsed and you got squished, okay? Well, automatically the light would know that you're here because the light now knows that you're here. Now, the light doesn't, doesn't have a record of where you're going. There's no rules, no regulations, no history, right? So it would know that you're here because that's put in place now to get people off this planet. Okay? So you're able to be connected to the light. Otherwise, 
it won't know that you're here. How do we know that the light's not alien light if it's something that's a, a, a recognition point that sets you? Because I put that in place. Okay. That's in place. Okay. So I was doing all these healings on people, and I thought, shit, if they get taken sideways on a parallel life at ascension time, or something happens, then all this stuff that you guys have done is, is a waste. So I had to do that, okay? What I put on the website also is a, uh, an earth transfer clearing, and it, uh, it, it allows you to take your clearings, which has your spirit energy in it also. Each time you do a clearing, you get more spirit back, so it actually is like a holding place for you. It costs a penny. Just <laughs> <laughs> one cent and then you just copy the code and use it, use it forever so you do a clearing and you just go in there and you put it in and, and it, and it m keeps track of you in a sense so it's, it's, it's an earth computer. transfer clearing yeah so, so you, have a uh, you can have somebody do it or have somebody else do it for you so that's, <laughs> that's what I put in place here so people could at least have a chance here and then the, then, then the computer goes down because all oh, oh, it won't matter. The, the, the light knows it instantly. But is, do, you, do you make a copy of it and carry it around with you? No, no, no. Once you do it once, it, it's, it's good. Oh, okay. So, so. so it that makes your spirit brighter, right? Yeah, yeah. So and you get, you get more right. spirit energy each time you do a clearing, but, but, but you're accounted. Why can't that happen to this planet? Why can't we do that to the planet? Well, your spirit's gone. So that can't happen. And the Earth Spirit doesn't want to come back here again. It already sacrificed. See, because hardly anybody ascended 2,000 years ago, it chose to come back for another 2,000 year uh, time to have people wake up. And they're not awakened. So it gave of itself, sacrificed its own energy to help humanity. And humanity screwed it up. Screwed up the Earth Spirit. It was more whole 2,000 years ago. So when the, it's the aliens, it's not really us. No, it's, it's people who, who do practices, anything outside of yourself. Yeah. So look at all these churches every Sunday. They're bringing in aliens, harming the earth spirit. So they courted the dark energies into the earth. Yeah, the they, they courted the dark energies here, yeah. So the, the fall of the planet is not, not really the aliens. It's the people bringing them in. If you stop doing that, they'd probably leave. If, if you could somehow neutralize everything. No, it, then you become prey. Yeah, so when you pray, P-R-A-Y, you become prey, P-R-E-Y, to what you're praying to. Even if you try to direct it toward the light? No, there's no light. The light doesn't, you can't direct anything to light. Because light is the false light. The only light you have is inside of yourself. But if you direct it to inside yourself? You, you don't need to direct anything. You already have it. Whatever you bring in from outside of yourself is going to be darkness. Genetic field, um, how it's just kind of information and genetic codes around you. Am I like interacting with? Can D DNA be mutated by interactions? Yes. Or by intentions? Yeah. And you know, so suppose I, you know, live with somebody. Mm -hmm. or Are we like? Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. If you don't shrink wrap when you walk by somebody, or the person you're living with, you're taking on their stuff. And that's triggering your DNA. Let's say, let's say that, that a, uh, uh, in fact, here, here we go. Ready? You want your DNA deactivated? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you guys got to ask me this stuff because, uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, how should I do this? Should I count to five so you can feel it getting turned off or count to ten or should I snap my finger? Any way it works. Count, count to ten. Count to ten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There, it's turned off. There. How's your body feel? You're disconnected now from your cellular memory, which is running your life. That's your storyline. That's your story plan. That's your life path, whatever you want to call it. That's the gift the aliens gave you. How do you feel? Your body feel like it's finally relaxed? Yeah. No internal chatter? No, no internal thoughts, stuff yeah. going on? No thoughts, right? Yeah. Still got this stuff. 
So, now that's, that's kind of the way you should be. Now I'll do the mind to heart drop. So th this you should be doing yourself daily. If everybody on the planet did this for like a week, we wouldn't have, uh, we'd have peace here. <coughs> but like I said, nobody wants to kill anybody, okay? The mind control patterns, programs from the aliens are what they're doing to humanity here to kill people. Would that really take a week? If you did it for a week, you could probably get rid of the aliens enough, yeah. If you did it for a week, I can take care of the aliens, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, well, 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 what happens is, is that the, your DNA triggers a, a situation. So if you read something, uh, then that triggers your DNA, and whatever you're reading is going to move your emotions to do something. Make sense to you? And so let's just take a war. Uh, I don't want to get you out of your space, but let's just take a war, right? So you're sitting home, and all of a sudden uh, uh, these people came in with, with uniforms on, and they killed your best f friend and their family next door to you. And you're going to be upset, right? That's your emotions. That's going to trigger you to want to combat whatever happened there, right? That's how, how emotions work. You're trying to seek a balance, right? Correct? You want to get rid, get rid of those people that harm somebody else. So you're, now you're in duality. So does your, does your right equal their wrong? You're trying to make it balanced, but it really doesn't. Okay, so that's what happens to all the wars. Just think of over in the Middle East, you know. Just think if we were to bomb some... Uh, a territory that really wasn't enemies, quote, quote, right? This happens all the time in wars. And then all of a sudden that the little village there goes, boy, we hate these people because we weren't involved in anything and they killed us or killed my family members, right? Now they're angry at this other group. Okay, that's kind of how it happens. And the aliens are up there feeding that anger in now, okay, to get you to do things that you probably would not normally do. Now they controlled you. So make sure your DNA is turned off. So one, two, three, four, five, there. Now I'm going to do the mind to heart drop. So what I tell people to do is to command your spirit. That's the first thing. You have to always command your spirit. If you don't command your spirit, then you're in mind energy. So you command your spirit to take your thoughts up here in your head and drop to your heart. 15 seconds, you're in your heart center. You can speak it out loud. And, you want, yeah, and speak it out loud, yeah, or whisper it. So here we go. And we can count from 10 to 1 backwards. We'll do it together. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There, now you're in your heart center. Now you are in peace. You're with source energy. The source energy is with your spirit, not outside of yourself. Remember, Jesus taught about the kingdom is within. That's what I say. You need just one book with one page, go within. Now you're peaceful. No more mind chatter. You took away the alien controls inside of your head that they gave you right now, and you're at peace. They don't want you to be at peace. Your body's relaxing, and you feel good. Am I correct? Now try to get a negative thought or a positive thought. It's very hard to, to fish something out of there, right? It doesn't exist in source energy because source energy does not judge. Judgment is in duality. And this is where you want to live your life, in the moment. You're in the true moment right now with your spirit, with your soul, if you want to use that term. Yeah, every day, yeah, yeah, and, and do it, you know, five, six times a day. The more often, the better. And then how many times do you count backwards? You, you, you can do from 10 to 1 if you want to do it from 5 on down, but some people like to do the longer <coughs> version, or, or do, do 10, because I do that. Yeah. And I only do it from, from 10 to 1, uh, mainly because people like to feel their thoughts drop down, okay? Yeah, and you're doing a command. You're commanding your spirit. See, if you want anything done inside of your body, you have to command your spirit to do that. Otherwise, it's asleep. Yeah. And 
we can do count it down. Was it three times? You want to ten to yeah, five? yeah. Normally three, th three to four times is enough. Yeah. Yeah, and you're going to feel it, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, if you're kind of a doubt, then do it five times. But, you know, like I said, 15 seconds, then you're done. And now, what's going to take you out of this space? The phone rings, you hear somebody going, yeah, 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 right? Well, what do they do? They just activated you. They got you back into the head, into mind energy, right? So you stay out of the mind energy. And now you can think now in your heart, okay? But it won't be in duality. Now, as you do this more often, that little place that you went to will start to expand out. Remember, initially, your whole body was your spirit, or we'll say soul energy, okay? Everything in you was connected with that. You had no mind energy. So your whole body is a sounding board, we'll say, right? It, it has all that consciousness inside of it. So the more often you do it, the more able you're going to be to have more spirit energy with you, and it's going to be expanded out throughout your whole body the way you're supposed to be, like a baby, right? Can we do that over? again, or does it start to nullify itself? It, well, no, it's, yeah, it'll never nullify itself, but you can get out of <coughs> as you start to uh, get more of mind energy, but do it like five times a day. Not necessarily after something <coughs> upsets you or something. Oh, no, no. Do it whenever. Yeah, whenever you choose to. Maybe set your clock or something. Yes? When you talk about shrink wrapping your energy. Yes. Are you shrink wrapping your energy body? What do you, what do you say? Oh, okay, shrink wrapping is you're taking the auric field, your presence that you are emitting. If you were to shrink wrap yourself, you would probably look invisible to people around you. Okay? So I would imagine that uh, some of the militaries teach that to soldiers who are out. They say, okay, you know, instead of being all frantic, right? and you're emitting all this energy around to be spotted if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you know, and the enemy's around you. If you shrink wrap yourself, then, remember, they're putting out psychic energies trying to find you, right? What are they looking for? They're looking for your emotional energies, right? The signature of you. So if you shrink wrap yourself, you'd probably be invisible. So how do you actually do that? Command your body to do that. Tell, tell your body to bring your energy. What, is, uh, what I'll do is... Uh, I pull all of you out of out this energy out of you. I'm saying that wrong. I'll take your energy field in front of you and bring it up here, but you won't be mixing with each other. Okay, so I'll put it right to the podium here. Ready? Because that's one thing I always think about, like mixing with each other. Like, yeah. How, how do you know that? Are you like? Oh, how do I know that? Well, like, how would I know that? You know? Oh, you don't. You, you don't know it. You just do it. Just tell your body. That's it. Period done. Tell your body to shrink up. So I'm going to take your energies and uh, you're all going to be parallel to each other but not crossing over even if you're in front of somebody. And I'll bring you up to the front here. Ready? Zip. There's your energy up here. Now you should have great psychic ability feeling the podium, feeling that microphone, the stand, you know, maybe the back wall possibly. Okay? And now I want to bring the energy right to your, your front of your body, right to your skin. Zip. There you go. Okay? So right now, you're self-contained. Now I'm going to take your energy from behind you, okay, and put it to that back wall. So you can look at the back wall right now. That's quite a ways away, right? Okay. You guys ready? Zip. There, you're against the back wall now. So if you notice, you have great psychic abilities on that wall. If somebody were to walk into that door, you'd know instantly that they came in here. Now I'm going to bring it back to you, right to your skin. Zip. It's back to your skin now. Yes? Ron, do you mind if I just say something? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, you'll know you're shrink wrapped because of the way people treat you. Like oh, yeah. Like said, you'll be invisible. So you'll feel like nobody likes you. Or, <laughs> do you know what it, like, you'll, you'll know. No one Nobody notices you. I don't want anybody to like So I've been shrink wrapped. No, but no, but you'll no. Say, no, that's what you'll, <laughs> that's what you'll start thinking. You'll say, nobody noticed my hair. Well, you shrink wrapped yourself, so they can't. They can't. Yeah. So that's just something you have to get used to. It's not that they don't like you; it's just that they don't feel it. They don't get your energy. And you can feel it happening too. Say white light, white light, white light, white light, and that can protect you. No. no, no, no. That's light of the darkness. That's outside of yourself. Using mind energy. 
your thinking, right? When you think, you use a mind energy. So whatever they have taught you and all those book sets out there that everybody has made, a new age metaphysics, you're using mind energy. They channeled the aliens to get the books written through the alien darkness of mind energy, collective consciousness, and they wrote a book on how to control you. Yes? Um, you talk, tried a few just talk loud. I've tried a few different clearings um, to get rid of my channeling stuff. Okay. It hasn't worked. Have you tried our web, my website? Have you yeah. tried? Yeah. Okay, so you're still, you're still being connected? Yeah. Have you did the uh, alien, alien attack page? Yes. Okay, okay, Th then you want to do it a lot. Uh, go to the, I put up a brand new clearing uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, so that would be basically uh, da -da 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 -da. end of, uh, we'll just say around, around the 1st of, Mar 1st of February. It's the Galactic Federation clearing, it's a free clearing, whole lifetime clearing. Do that one. It's on the website on the left hand side. It'll say under alien attack removal, it'll say Galactic Federation, maybe clearing, okay? Do that. It's a whole lifetime clearing. You do that once. It takes probably 10, 15 minutes. And then from there, do the unlimited and do that whenever you feel something happening. That keeps you current. Remember, the, the clearings, when you first start a whole lifetime clearing, it starts clearing when you start the clearing. Okay? Now, when you're done with it after, say, 10 minutes, it doesn't go into the future. It only works in the now, so it takes the now and goes back into your history. So now you have the future, which it doesn't take care of, so the Unlimited does that. <coughs> so you're, yes, go ahead. How do you think from the heart? How do you think from the heart? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Make sure you're all in your heart. There, got you hooked up. Okay, now start to think. Think of a expression, an idea that you have, that you'd like to maybe do. It won't be up here that you're thinking. It's, it's, it's going to be maybe hard for some of you because you're used to popping up here to get collective consciousness. St stay in your heart and now, now start to think. You're, you're in your heart when you, you don't even know that you're in your heart. When you start doing things automatic and time stops. Okay? Because you go there anyway. You just don't know it. The old saying, uh, time flies when you're having fun, okay? Anybody connecting with uh, ideas right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. No. no? Okay. The people over here getting inspiration or... I guess inspiration is the wrong word. That's like communication with God. I don't like to use wrong word. But if you guys feel like you're a little more connected, because you're actually connected to your spirit. Well, it took me back to positive concepts that I'm, yes. that I'm positive I'm concepts. On in life, yeah. So to speak. Uh huh. Like purposes. Yeah, your spirit knows. Uh, you know, once you connect there, but there's no judgment. It's not going to say, "Oh, this color is bad. This one is, you know, good." It'll It'll give you a choice, and, and within that choice, then it's up to you to have your free will, free choice to decide what, what you want to do. It'll never say, oh, this is bad and this is good. And it can't do that. It doesn't live in duality. So did you do a mind drop for us there? Yeah, then? yeah. Okay. So to, then for him to, or for us to be able to do it individually, we, just, we get into that mind drop. Yeah, you just, just do the mind drop and, and get there. Yes, uh-huh. And, and, and it may take a little while to do it consciously. Remember, you do it uh, in a sense when you start doing something and all of a sudden time stops for you. When time stops, that's when you're in the flow of your spirit. That's when you're out of the alien agenda. And for somebody like me, who's, I mean, I've been in my head my whole life. Um, so I, uh, you know, I can do, I really felt it when, when we go into the heart. And when, so when you think from the heart, the difficulty for me is I was trying to consciously think of ideas so if I pop back up. Yeah. Um, instead, you just kind of let what ideas. Yeah, just, just allow them to flow, yeah. And, and just keep dropping down. And it would take a while because you're not trained to do this. You have to break loose of the alien programs of mind to do this. 
You can see it's simple to do to get in there, right? You know, that's how powerful your spirit is. Just think of what your spirit's doing when you do the mind to heart drop, okay? You're commanding your little spirit, a little piece of you, <laughs> which isn't much, a little grain of sand, to disconnect you from alien programs, okay? And that's what it's doing because they're attached to your mind. You're hooked up that way. So it's, it's doing a great job to do that, but you need to now know how to utilize it. And eventually, as you do it more and more, your spirit will start to become more whole as you bring in more of your spirit through having clearings to get rid of your blockages, okay? Because the blockages prevent your spirit from being in your body. So you want to get back to being a child, being a baby. That's where you want to get to, so your whole body has spirit energy in it. So all of your thoughts of how to live here, which was ingrained in you, right, kicked out your spirit. Because your spirit can't come into those blockages. So you don't have to really clean out your DNA. The, the clearings do that. But you don't have to get all of it cleaned out because all you have to deal with is what's activated. Okay? So what came up in this lifetime is what you want to get rid of. The other people around you will trigger something new on you when that phone call rings and they're giving you that mind chatter about something that you get tied into. Then that's going to go into your DNA and bring up another storyline. And now you have that storyline presented to you and now you're going to be using that storyline to communicate with that person. Because in, 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 in the peace energy, there's no storylines. And then you go on the website, you know, do your emotional whole lifetime clearing. And then you go, oh, man, I got five phone calls today of all this trauma and trauma. Well, go on there, maybe at lunchtime. It takes probably longer to log into the website. Click it for, for five hours or something. It counts down, zip, you're out of it. it takes it away from you on the unlimited clearing. Now you're back in peace energy. That history is taken away. In fact, I'll just do it right now for you. So you probably all drove here, right? So, so think of when you first got up. Okay, you got up and you did whatever you did. Anything come up emotionally for you? It probably did. Something probably got triggered, right? Maybe your toothpaste tube was squeezed wrong or something, or you know, <laughs> or you lost something, you know, oh, where'd this thing go? I need to, you know. Okay, ready? I'll release that one situation. It's gone. Okay, next one that you have, just think of things in order. Okay, next one, gone. 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 Are you getting closer here now in your car? <laughs> Next one, gone. Next one, gone. Next one, gone. And now we'll get you when you came into the lobby here. Maybe somebody's watched in front of you or didn't know what to do anxiety or something, you know, where, where do I go, right, what room, etc. Next one, gone. And next one, gone. Maybe some people touched you, didn't like it. Next one, gone. Next one, gone. Next one, gone. There. Now, how do you feel? Good. More light. More light. Do you, you feel like, like you started your day, nothing happened? You're here? So, so you got triggered and all those emotions. And all those emotions uh, can go very deep into other situations, right? But we just cleared off the surface now of what you dealt with today. So now you're at peace. That's where the unlimited clearing works. You go in there and you type in, you know, an hour. If you had a really bad situation, maybe somebody called you and said, oh boy, my... Uh, my, my daughter Jane uh, was at school playing baseball and got hit in the head with the baseball and, uh, you know, has a concussion. That would be pretty traumatic, you know, to hear that. And you go, oh, you know, and the person dumped their load onto you, right? So you go in there and you clear that out and it's gone. Because they gave you that stuff. And that stuff got activated in you because maybe you knew somebody in this lifetime who had a concussion. Or maybe you have the remembrance, but it's not really conscious of you having a concussion, you know, 10,000 years ago in your ancestors, okay? So that gets triggered. Now it's up on the surface now. Now you're going to be dealing with uh, an issue of concussions. That's your new, new agenda for this lifetime. 
Somebody else stirred it up in you. Uh, on my website, you first do your whole lot of time emotional clearing. Okay. okay and, and I give a discount, which is $50. And I also give you a $50, a $100 discount just for being here on clearings. That'll offset your, your paying to come in here. Okay? So you want to get your name listed there so I can, you know, have your information. What's that? I don't have a computer because I blow them up. Well, it has somebody do it for you. Yeah, that can be done. Okay. So basically, I'm giving you a $150 discount on your first clearing. Okay? Just contact me. So what you have is uh, the whole lifetime clearing uh, is $5 times your age. Okay? So I see some people here are pretty young looking. <laughs> but the most I charge is $300, okay, on a regular person. Okay, and then from there you do that clearing, and then it's fifty dollars for the uh, 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 unlimited. Go on it whenever you want to. And I recommend two to three times a day. And all of a sudden you're at peace, just like you are right now. Remember, I took away what happened from from where you got up to now. Look at it. And with the way the light works, it doesn't care what you went through. It doesn't analyze you. It just sees a blockage. Okay. And the blockage is taking away the energy for your spirit to be with you. It just takes it out, zip, neutralizes it, gets rid of it, whatever happens. And then from there, it fills it fills a little cubby hole, a little, a little post office box, we'll call it, right, with peace energy. So that experience that you dealt with is now with peace energy. You can probably still see the seams on it, but there's no emotional trauma because, it, because the light still you know, you're here to experience, so you're still not going to lose that situation. Typically, you could if there's a lot of trauma attached to it, but normally it just wants to get rid of the emotion so your spirit can be with you, because your spirit can't come into emotions. You kick it out of your body. Yes? Can you describe your, your, your typical day and where your consciousness is? You know, my typical day would be I get up, I'm in my head, I meditate. That's probably, you know, I get into my heart from that period. Probably minutes after I meditate, I'm probably back in my head. Yeah. Was the day until just, just do the mind to heart drop in yeah. 15 seconds. You give up meditation. You don't really need to do that yeah. because that's wasting part of your life. Okay? So just do the mind to heart drop. You're already there. Yeah. And, and there's no ritual, no nothing. You, you're there and you can walk, live your life, and be heart-centered. What about when you do things like, let's say, if you're, if you're working on a book project? Are you back up in your head for that? You, you could be, yeah and then drop back into your heart because the information is much more when you go into your heart than it would be inside of your head because yeah. you're limited to programs. Remember, uh, the, we're like a computer. Uh, our body is like a computer uh, hard drive. So I'm, I'm not trying to, there's different ways you could take that, okay? Because some people do tap it on your body, like they say, oh, you have a problem here, and they'll tap on you, you know, and find a, a problem or something, you know. But your body is just full of programs. So you live in a program by the aliens. So you get out of the program. So you get into your heart, and all of a sudden you got everything available versus a limitation of universal mind programming that they're giving you. Remember, you have a natal chart. When you're born, you have a natal chart that's controlled by them. That's the astrological chart? Astrological chart, yeah. And so that, that chart that you have is your life path. You can change it, you know, but that's basically what you have in stone. I've talked to people who said, yeah, I went to a person who does astrology, some, you know, like Vedic astrology or something, and some people are very, very good, and they go, yeah, they, I asked them what happened, and they could go and almost pinpoint the, the month of when I had an accident, when this happened to me, and the whole history, the back end of you is, is there. Okay, and then you know they can tell you what's ahead of you. Well, that's the program. So, is it bad to have a program? Well, yeah. What if you had a really crappy program? You know, uh, you know, which we probably all have, right? <laughs> but let, let's just say that to you, you know, you know. Like I said, if the aliens are here to help us, and there's a lot of good things happening here, life is great. We should have you know thousand dollar bills coming, or, or you know, ten hundreds in our mailbox each day. You say, oh wow, I got some more money, you know. Uh, no more stress. I can buy things, you know, and 
probably buy enough, then you probably get satisfied. But uh, but basically, everybody has trauma here of some sort. Is it the healing on your website from aliens too? Or? Yeah, I have an alien attack page there. Uh, I, I got into aliens because I was forced to get into aliens. I didn't want to get into aliens. The last thing I wanted to do was deal with aliens. I just wanted to do healings. And then all of a sudden, I go to expos and people kind of hear that I'm doing something with aliens a little bit, and they take me aside and say, Ron, I've been abducted. I know I have babies up there in the, in the thing. They take my eggs. You know, I've had these incisions put into me, and I get all this agenda from people. Can you help me? And I go, well, oh, shit, you know? So I had to put up an alien attack page, and that took a while to do, and it's very complicated. It's very, very long. Uh, I shouldn't say complicated. It's... Uh, it's very complete, okay? I think there's maybe uh, maybe five or six options to it. Each option, they're very, very long, and it's to help everybody who has been abducted. And it's, uh, it's, it costs $10 a week, 30 bucks for the month. And you get on that page and you leave the light beam up that comes up for healings. Take off your, cream, uh, your screen saver, you know, you know, have it so the light beam stays up all night, and it will help you. Can't guarantee it'll get rid of the aliens, 100 percent, but it will help you. It's designed for that, and that draw, that brought me into what I'm doing now with alien stuff and seeing more and battling them and etc. How much time do we have left? Are we halfway through? You think? Four minutes. For what? Uh, to be through, it's uh, 4:26. Until 5:30. Oh, 4 or 5:30. Yeah. 26. We got an hour basically. What about the yeah, earth changes going on, are they from the aliens, or is this really natural? This what? The, the earth changes that we're supposedly having. Oh, oh okay, earth changes. I'll get back into that now. So, <coughs> what, what happened, uh, probably, uh, let's see here, around August of last year, the energies were changing. So we went through you know, the Mayan calendar right on December, say, 21st, hypothetically, right? And so we had prototype humans come in here, cloned bodies. So these alien cloned bodies were taken the place of humans. Now, you may be able to remember back around that time before the Mayan calendar, we'll say, stopped, okay? That, that was the alien feeding frenzy. So everybody was tuning into that. Something big was happening. Universal shift, maybe a dimensional shift into fourth, con fourth dimensional reality or whatever they were saying, whatever they're writing about, talking about. You know, but that was the key thing, that something is happening. That was the main abduction time for the aliens to take people off a planet. And this is a scary spot stuff, okay? So, uh, there was people, do you want to share your story or not? Or should I share it for you? you okay, I'll share it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can pass this around here. This is uh, just off one of those uh, trade magazines here. You can see how, how the legs look different, the bodies look different, and the dress looks different. So they're not really communicating to you who's going to wear this stuff. They're communicating to the cloned replicas and the clones out of here. So what happened was the people uh, that were on the planet, like I said, this, this will be kind of scary for you, but just hang in. They got abducted. They're gone. Who got and abducted? People, humans. Okay. And they brought in clones to this planet. And Robotic humans? as human-looking people. Okay. Robotic, you know. Have they been here for a long time? They, they, uh, yeah, that's true, too. But, but you know, we're looking at about 90% of the population. Artificial intelligent bodies, okay? So, one story was around uh, Christmas time, approximately, within that time frame. Uh, people go Christmas shopping, right? So, what would it be like if you went to a shopping center, uh, a very large, say, Walmart, superstore, right? Gigantic parking lot, right? Full of cars, and you went into the store, there's like 50 people in it. Okay? Now, what would you think of that? Weird. Weird, right? I've noticed that in a lot of stories. Okay, good, good, okay. 
So what, happens, what happened was, and is still happening, is that the humans drove to that location, got abducted in the Beyondo. Remember, the aliens are in control of time, so they can stop time and start time. Took the people out, probably out of their cars, or as they're walking, they're gone. And then they created clone, a clone human of them, artificial intelligent, and at some point brought them back down again, and then they went into the store. Now, what would you think if you went into a store? You're, you're talking about giving change and the cashier wouldn't take your money. So, so this lady went into a store. She said that she bought something for $3.99 and somehow had the exact change of 99 cents and three dollars, okay, which is pretty unusual, right? But she had that. She gave it to the cashier and the cashier didn't know what to do. Her, her program was not in place to accept three dollars and all this change. She wanted to have four dollars because her program was, I know how to give change on four dollars so I can probably count backwards and I can give you a penny. But 99 cents, oh geez doesn't exist. Not programmed yet. That's what we have right now, okay? So if you go and you see a lot of cars around and there's nobody in the stores, you wonder, well, that's kind of weird. Well, they're not here. They, they are being abducted, or they have been abducted, and at some point, clones will come back in here looking like them with the backstory for probably a few weeks or whatever, So and then they'll go do their shopping. It takes that it just takes a minute? It depends what the aliens are doing to those people. And, and they have to fabricate a body that looks like you because you're going to be interacting with your friends. Okay? And then another story was going into a store, very similar to, to these ladies here, uh, buying something for over $200, having a $100 bill, and a 50 and 20s and other things, right? given it to the cashier, and the cashier could not recognize, and when they counted the money, it was $100 less. The cashier did not know what the $100 bill was. It couldn't, just a piece of paper. You don't have, you don't have the correct change here. Didn't know what a $100 bill was. Okay? Now, have you ever, and then the clones have the programs of being uh, certain words, okay? All they know is a limited language. So if you noticed at the expo here, uh, walking in and out of those two little pillars, you know, when they're looking for your wristbands and stuff, uh, the one person here had the same exact phrase and words, right? Same voice infl inflection all the time. You'd say something like, thank you for coming, or something like that. Right? You guys remember that? Yeah. Sounded identical each time. It was just as if you walked up, and you got three feet away, and you pushed a button to leave, and all of a sudden, this thing turned on and said that. So that, that is a clone. It was programmed with that one information to say. That's not by the government by the aliens. And how do you spot that in everyday life? Okay. When you find something that's kind of strange or goofy with somebody, or you're having a conversation, let's just say you go see an old a, a client of yours, right? And you go there and you say, yeah, I was here last time and I was doing this kind of radionic you know, treatment on you. And they look at you and they go, what's that machine? Or they don't know what you're talking about and they can't give, give you a conversation because they can't connect the dots. They might instantly try to program, reprogram the, the clone, okay, with more back data if they can find it. But most clones don't have enough information. They're very, very limited. I'll tell you a story that happened to me. Um, in Mount Shasta, uh, this is... Uh, I think probably around maybe, uh, I don't know, I'll just say uh, October. And we're at a restaurant on near a corner. There's a restaurant there called the uh, the Bear Restaurant, okay? 
and the police department is probably about two blocks away. Okay, okay, so it's real close. There's railroad tracks, and the next block is with the, the police department. So I'm looking out the window, and a little little white dog is there running around without an owner, right? And then it's doing this back and forth. Then it runs across the street. Well, all of a sudden, all these cars appear. <coughs> In the Mount Shasta, that doesn't normally happen. You know, it's only 3,500 people, and that's on a good day, right? Normally, people only come there you know, in the summertime, so maybe half of that. Okay, so a little town, right? And all of a sudden, all these cars appear, and I think three cars pulled over to try to help the dog. So I tell the, the uh, waitresses, I said, you know, call the police department to get some help with the dog. You know, two blocks away, right? And they looked at me like, call the police department? Like, how do you do that? How do you use a phone, right? That's kind of like what I was picking up. I said, well, you know, then I said, are you, I said something to him that was kind of sarcastic or something. I think I said, are you people awake or are you conscious? Yeah, I said, are you people conscious? Now, you know, as I said that, everybody now in the restaurant is watching this little dog running across the street, going to get hit by a car. And uh, finally somebody got the dog. But they just didn't know what to do. And one lady said, well, the police department here doesn't have an, an animal control, <laughs> you know, department. I thought they do is stop traffic, you know. But, but she, she didn't get it. She didn't get it at all. And there's three of them, and they're just like watching the dog too. So that's when it kind of first started uh, becoming more, more prevalent. So, so as you start watching people, you're going to notice that these people are not human. Plus, they have no body energy. Okay? You're going to walk up to them and maybe brush against them. They won't have any, there's no spirit in them. They have a dark side spirit that's replicating a spirit of light. And, why is that and their true? eyes are going to be probably very, very bright for most people. Is that the, that's what I was going to ask you about this Levi thing. Have you heard about the mark of the Levi? No. Okay. So just watch people around and they're not going to be behaving like they used to. But they have bright eyes. That's one thing I yeah. notice. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the newer clones will typically have brighter eyes. So somebody was, uh, I brought up earlier at one of the, uh, sometime, uh, uh, somebody asked about uh, how do you find aliens or something. So basically, an alien that's living here, not that this is bad, because there are aliens that are stuck here and have been here for a while, and maybe they've been here for a thousand years or something, but an alien uh, typically will have long fingers, Okay, a long stretched out neck, and typically blue eyes. If you see somebody like that, that would be an alien life form that is of the newer models than what you have yourself, okay? So if you see somebody like that, you're going to know that, you know, and they, they could be more intelligent. It's not that they're bad, okay, just that they're, they're, they got stuck here. Those are the, yeah. Like a human alien that would be here, yeah. Okay. An older human alien, okay. Yeah. I thought we were all aliens. <laughs> well, you are all aliens, but, but that's the newer ones, the more recent ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, so you're going to see, yeah, if you see anybody with really bright eyes, really, really bright eyes, and you get kind of attracted to those eyes, especially the opposite sex, okay, you look at them and you go, wow, you know, that's an alien. That, that, yeah, and, and, or it could be a, a, a clone replica. There is a, a clone that uh, I see all the time in New York that normally comes by. And most clone, repli uh, most clone replicas that are here are a, a beautiful looking body. Okay? The ideal looking man, ideal looking woman, because the alien races are not going to bring in some big fat <laughs> squat person, you know. What, that looks ugly, they're going to try to impress the other aliens uh, on how they look so that they're going to look, you know, really nice because they want to bring in the ideal specimen here. Why are they doing this? Why are they bringing clones in here? Yeah. I don't exactly know yet. They haven't brought in all the programs yet. I, I would guess that maybe in six months they'll start to get emotions. Uh, one reason is could be maybe they want to take over the planet and just put a working force here, but 
since they live off our emotions, there'd be really no sense to just have people working on a job. But if you do notice, what you will notice, everybody here is going to notice that the airwaves now are quiet. Okay? You go out and to a bunch of people, before you could actually hear their minds thinking, that buzzing, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have that now. It's, it's completely quiet because they're on a different program. So what happened after the, the Mayan calendar, the shift in consciousness, you know, on the 21st of December, that was the main abduction day for all the alien races because everybody knew about something's going to happen, right? Remember, you, you heard about it and you manually put that fish hook in your mouth because you heard about something, you connected to it, okay? Then they just reeled you in, typically, okay, for most people. Well, we shifted at the first of the year, another time zone, okay? They completely changed time for 2013. Have any of you went out and started walking and you noticed that as you put your foot down, your foot may go lower or higher, and you go, well, that's kind of weird. I'm not walking, you know, uh, on pebbles or walking like on an escalator or something as your foot moves up and down as you place it. Have you noticed that? Okay. Ron, with this quietness, now they don't have an emotional body. That's why it's so quiet. It's quiet. Yeah, there's no emotions in them yet. Yeah. You don't have to do the emotional clearing right now for them. There's no emotional body. Not yet, no. But, but they are mind controlled. So, you know, what could the aliens do with the race of uh, people here, you know, to get rid of humans, you know, with the mind control energies? But aside from that, <laughs> they need the emotions to live on, so just having a workforce here, unless you're planning to bring in something from their ships to have people work in a factory or something, which I kind of doubt. Why can't they just bring in their own level? Why can't they bring in their own negative life force feeding utensil. Why do I don't know. I, I don't know. Why do they have to like, use us? I mean, we're uh, not that uh, much. Yeah. I mean, why don't cattle. they have some giant, you know, giant nuclear power negative plant? Don't know. Don't know. But the, the, we have a spirit in us. So, And the people that got abducted <coughs> that are no longer here that you see out on the streets, remember the, the program is very limited. So as you see people, they won't have a really long history of being here. So just just watch people. No, I mean, if, you mean you can't if you ask them about what they did five years ago, they they'll just they may not know, or they may get downloaded with some kind of backstory of their life, but and, and it could be your friend, neighbor. If it's been abducted, what would it look like then? They, they'll look just like themselves. Okay, but they'll that they recreated a clone in the image of that person. But they won't have that person's. I mean, how is that person? They won't have history, typically. <laughs> if you pick something... I mean, what do they say about their mother and father? They may not know too much. Just try it out. All they have is, is the current program right now to survive. And they don't have much data accumulated. Remember, they're like a computer. They, they haven't been downloaded with stuff. Okay? <coughs> so they're, they're a brand new life form here. serious time in their life and they're not they're just kind of shut off like I don't I don't I wouldn't I don't know I mean I'm just saying yeah I'm not well yeah well yeah anything could be possible but but this is happening to a lot of people who see this not, not just what I'm saying here I get a lot of validation from people where I, things are weird I think you know because it feels odd to you it doesn't feel right you know when someone talks to you and you know they're lying I think it's the same thing what did you say yeah uh-huh you're going to have that consciousness. They put these uh, uh, permanent clones inside the bodies. Now they're going to have to teach these, uh, these bodies how to think and discern and understand. And that's the challenge they're facing right now, isn't it? Yeah, well, they're facing a lot because I'm battling the aliens. They're bringing in programs. Uh -huh. <laughs> what, what I notice with the people that are, are clones is that when you're talking to them, they don't really, they have a hard time asking you questions and they sort of are extracting information from you about 
how they are. It's very, I find that very interesting with the, the colognes back where I live because they don't, they don't really have a, seem to have a whole memory of, of who they are. But the, and, and they'll sort of say, well, you know, we did this and, and they, and you end up telling them what you did which gives them their memory and their history. And they, they kind of suck it out of you, and I think they've been given something like that. Yeah, I worked with a person back in New York a couple of years ago, and uh, he was uh, a robotic uh, person, okay? Uh, and uh, controlled by robotics, okay? So his body was set up differently. So he would be, in a sense, maybe a clone, but maybe not. But uh, anyway, he said, Ron, for some reason, I just don't relate to my body. OK? And so I said, well, let's see. He says, I don't, I don't really connect to my legs at all. So I said, OK, well, you must have a robotic program you know, on your legs. So uh, I took the programs off of his legs. And then he had to go to the restroom. So we're at the, what I call the Alien Cafe. I'll, I'll talk about that for a minute here. This is very interesting. So anyway, we're upstairs, and he has to go to the restroom, which is downstairs. He gets to the stairs, and because I took away his robotic program <coughs> of not feeling his legs, he didn't know how to walk down the stairs. How did he know how to walk to them? He, he was able to walk straight. That was probably a challenge. But now the stairs, uh-oh. So he said that what I had to do was just stand there, and I watched people walk up, and I had to move over to watch people walk down, and then I had to really think hard how to move one of my feet in front of the other, and then to drop down to do the steps. He said, and I was self-learning as I was walking. And then he went to the bathroom, but then he had to re re watch people walk up because he only had the program for walking down, okay? then he had to get the new program to walk up the stairs. Uh, another weird story that I had uh, is that I was working with a person, and this happens about once a year. He comes up to me and says, Ron, uh, my vision's off, kind of blurry. The first time he goes, Ron, my, my, can you work on my eye here? It just feels like there's something there, you know, it's blurry. Uh, kind of out of focus, not right. I go, okay, so I look at his eye, tune into it, I go, oh, you got a camera in your eye. Okay. So I pull out this camera, and along with it came a little microphone that was attached to his ear. Zip, came out. So two seconds later, he has brown eyes, right? <laughs> his one eye turns completely black. Look at his eye, look at the front of mine. He's watching it too. <laughs> we look at each other, think like, holy shit, you know? <laughs> I say, well, you know, you have one eye brown, one eye black. He goes, yeah, but it feels better. <laughs> okay, so after about 15 minutes, now he, his eyes turning back to brown again. Now he can see fine. I see a lot of stuff. So Alien Cafe. So I'm in there doing my first timeline crashes. Uh, and what I was doing this year, I had a lot of, uh, uh, what do I say? I could use the word uh, uh, governments, aliens, uh, military. Uh, they're all getting intel. So I go to this alien cafe. Uh, it's actually a Starbucks, but I just happen to call it that because all the aliens would go there. So there's a bunch of tables like this here, uh, maybe like uh, I'll just say 15 of them, right, in a small little space. You know, you know how it is, where there are small space, a bunch of chairs, and these people are in there with suits on, different races of people. So I'm seeing all different types, and they're talking their own language, right? And they have their computer in front of most of them, just doing their work. I'm doing these timeline crashes for probably about three or four hours, and they don't move, but they're overhearing my conversation as I'm doing these timeline crashes. And then when I want to get up and leave, they start to leave. Okay, another interesting thing, I'm in there and I'm having this awareness, and I'm hearing one nationality of people talking over here at this table, and another group talking over here, and they're 
conversations are very, very similar, okay? Which means that they're giving intel. So whatever is in their body, uh, and I could use the term remote viewers maybe, or listening devices, or shapeshifters, or something in there that's using the physical body to get intel, and they're talking to each other, exchanging data, just in their normal conversations. So when you go out anywhere and you have two tables close by, just listen and just see what's happening. Were you sourcing those people? Well, it's like getting information from them? No, sourcing, giving them your source because when you no, left, they left. I, I, I was just listening to, to those people. But yeah, yeah, I was giving all those uh, people uh, at that time uh, information on what I was doing. And oddly enough, in New York, even though, you know, uh, continuously almost there's always a siren going on that you can hear about every 10 minutes, each time I did a timeline crash, a siren would happen. So I go to the New Yorker Hotel in the lobby, uh, which is where the expo is, and this is a few days afterwards. I'm doing some timeline crashes there. And all of a sudden, uh, the alarm went off in the building and they got a hook and ladder truck outside. They're blocking the traffic. This is like a rush hour, right? Which is probably the worst time to ever do for them to block the streets, right? Like five o'clock or something. And there's probably about maybe six to eight engines out there. All the men are coming in with their, with their uh, garb on and the hoses, <laughs> everything else. Thinking, yeah, because the alarm went off, you know? But uh, that was interesting. Yes? Can you do a robotic thing? Oh, robotic, here we go. Okay, we can wait a minute. Well, uh, I'm still working on him even though he's gone, okay? Are you? Yep. <coughs> so, uh, what we're going to do is take off a robotic program. Uh, uh, how about off of your ankles? Anybody have ankle problems? I could do your hands. Yes. What do you want? You want ankles? Yes, that's great. I just fill up my bicycle. So <laughs> legs, eyes, spine. Legs, mm -hmm. eyes. Okay. Oh, eyes. 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 Yeah. Okay, eyes. Here we go. So, left eye, ready? So, I'll count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. And see how your left eye feels. Can you see a little clearer? Any changes in color? Okay, next eye, right eye. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There. And I'll, I'll do your hands. The hands are a little easier. So I'll do one off of your uh, left hand here. Here we go. So just uh, kind of feel your hands, wiggle your, your palm of your hands. Just see how they feel. Okay, so left hand. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, now see how your hand feels. Does it have a different texture to it? Does it feel lighter? Does it feel like you have more movement in your knuckles? It's not aluminum anymore. It's flesh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I'll do. I'll do your right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There. Now no, no, we go your other hand. And it should feel a little better. Oh, yeah. This was so stiff, and now it's. Okay. Uh, feel good now? Easy. So that's a program that was on you. So your whole body is remote controlled by them. Okay? Legs? Okay. Uh, okay, so I'll do, uh, I'll first do knees. In fact, what I'll, do, I'll go a little further. So that, that's the program. So the programs are different than clone replicas. So I'll do some clone replica stuff here. I'll give you a little back history quickly here. So every 10 minutes, a human, not a clone. There's two different types, OK? You have the real clones that you see maybe in the movies that don't age, OK, these people. You might see people that you watch a movie and go, wow been acting for 30 years, looks a lot younger than I do now, okay? <laughs> so I don't give any names here, <laughs> okay? And so those are people that have paid uh, typically 
to go to the underground cloning factories to have a new body made, okay? And a lot of times the older clones had bone problems, they lose their consciousness, they don't have enough memory, and they start to fizzle out. So the new ones are a little better, okay? Uh, then you have, yeah. huh? Don't we want that? Don't we want to be a clone, you want to be a clone, no. Okay. Uh, so, so the humans here, besides those, so those are real clones. And I think it costs like $10 million if you have that much money to find somebody to give you that, uh, that clone body. And then you live in the underground and you come up here, or the clones up here, and you're down there probably having fun, okay? Uh, the humans here get cloned out every 10 minutes. And you're here normally for two hours a month. And they need your physical bone structure and your GPS location to attach the clone replica to you. So I'll just go a little further. When you fly on an airplane, you have a different sensation in your body because you're not attached to the GPS location or lo you know, location where you're living or town that you're in. So you're actually disconnected from a lot of that alien stuff when you're flying. I'm not talking about an, a ship that comes next to you in your window and you wave at them, you know. <laughs> but, but, and, and the aliens that we're talking about are not the ones that people are, are talking about at UFO conferences where they look for something in the sky, you know, with binoculars, although you could get, you know, the, the special uh, binoculars, I think infrared <laughs> to see them up there buzzing around fighting. But for, forget that. I'm talking about the ones that are really affecting you are invisible. That's why you have the ship clouds that form around them. The cloud forms around the ship, okay, with the flat bottoms, which you never had, you know, maybe 30, 40 years ago. Just saw one last night. Somebody just showed me that they took one uh, right off of Manhattan Beach uh, about two weeks ago. Okay. And some that they want you to see are, are created here. Yeah, and it could be a cloud thing. Okay. Uh, the, the national UFO that you might see. Okay. okay, so a UFO that you might physically see buzzing around uh, could be your neighbor flying it, okay? I won't go too much into that, but that's what I mean, okay? Yeah. So, so you get clawed out every 10 minutes, and uh, what happens is an alien race has you on here and also on timelines. So you have parallel lives on timelines. You could have a thousand of these with the same situation that you're dealing with. You could be driving your car, you could be cloned on a thousand timelines driving your car. Get into a car accident, it has physical body pain, then that's transmitted to a thousand different other alien races from those timelines that you're on, and they pull the energy off of you. So just being here is one thing, what you're dealing with, but they just replicate that. They want to, well, they live off your energy. That's the whole thing. They live off your pain and off your emotions. So what we're going to do now is make you more real. So I want to bring in more of you from these timelines. I'll do timeline crashes. So you people talked about probably pain with your body or conditions. So we're going to work with your legs. So anybody who has, oh, everybody, we're going to work with your legs, even if you have, have a condition or not, because you may have something going on. So uh, I'll just snap my fingers to do timeline crashes. I don't really count to 10, but I'll speed it up. So here we go. Yeah, yeah, once you get up and uh, maybe just walk and just get a, an idea how you feel walking, moving around a little bit. What they're doing now with the earth changes, is it, what, what does harp have to do with the ear changes? I don't get into harp too much. Okay. Doesn't that? Of course, that's what they're creating all these hurricanes of stuff with heart. And aliens. And aliens. I'd also like to work uh, personally sexual organs on your left side. It's uh, it's like my left side here, and then there's like, I've been hearing it's like a triangle or something. It's different timelines going on. Okay. It's side. It's like I've been hearing sideways. I've been hearing like pictures like just weird like 
stuff. Um, so, yeah, and my life has just been. Did, did everybody sign this? Okay. Kind of like a nightmare for okay. a while. Like going through like this nightmare. So, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, even my left eye, I've been feeling some stuff as well. Okay. We'll see what we can do with this uh, timeline yeah, crash. Spine as well. Okay. Okay, everybody. Uh, let's have your body awareness. Let's, let's start here again. So I'm going to do some timeline crashes here for your legs. Well, can we take a, a break or anything? Yeah, yeah. Should we take a break? Yeah. So I'll just start doing some timeline crashes here. So our time is uh, speeding up here. Okay, here we go. So timeline crashes. So first timeline, this is with leg problems. Remember, when they replicate you with the problem, that problem gets copy and pasted here onto this timeline. Okay, does that make sense to you? So you could be on a thousand timelines with a physical problem, and you can't get well here because you have a thousand timelines, we'll say, of that condition. You try to fix it here, what about the other thousand timelines? Okay? So once you clear away the timelines and that problem exists there, then all of a sudden when I bring your spirit back from each timeline here, then your spirit gets healed and all of a sudden your problem can go away. Okay? So here we go. A timeline crash. So I'll just start snapping them here. And you might feel your body jerk because each time I do a timeline crash, another alien race, remember they're in control of time. They can stop time for, for like a year, our time. We don't know that. You know, do you know that these lights are being turned off and on 120 times a second? You don't know that. I think it's always on, right? So, so you're, you're looking at uh, uh, each time I snap my finger, time is frozen for all of us. The video you know, is on pause. They recreate you, recreate the room, recreate everything here, everybody in here, and then, and then they bring you back in again from another timeline. Okay? That's the way it works. So each time I snap my finger, even though we're in time and it sounds like this is quick, to them it could be, you know, eons of time, and they have time to fix your hair. But you may find your body changing heights. You might feel thinner. You might have, your clothing could shift a little bit. It all depends how good the makeup artist is with you. So watch people around you. And if somebody jerks, that's an indication too that something happened. So here we go. We're just working with your legs right now. And whatever is wrong with your legs, we're, we're, we're getting that energy away. And each time I set my finger, you're getting more spirit energy. So you're getting more of yourself reclaimed. Anybody twitching or jerking? Are you feeling your body changing? Yeah, a real sensitive person is going to feel them going in and out, in and out, like, 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 like coming out of a toaster. Pop goes the weasel, you know? Okay, get up and just uh, walk, uh, you know, about three steps. See yeah. how your legs feel. Yeah. <laughs> Smoother? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, what, what, what's next here? Uh, uh, how about uh, hips? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's do, let's do your hips. Remember, your, your conditions, your problems are caused by the timelines because you had, maybe you incurred a problem here and the alien said, hey man, we got this energy coming off this person from pain, okay? And then all the aliens get on board and create timelines. They do timeline sharing, right? So every 10 minutes in linear time they have you, but we're just speeding this up right now. And eventually when the timelines crash and get done with, there's no more timelines and you're well. And this is sci-fi. <laughs> okay, I'll get up and walk and see how your hips feel. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll do toes next just to make sure. Okay. Any more freedom of movement or? Yeah, it is. 
Better? Yeah, better. Okay. Okay, let's do uh, toes now. We'll do feet and toes, okay? And if you can watch people around to see if they jerk or twist or change or something. Okay. Feet are levitating, you feel like? Uh huh. Hey, getting rid, of, getting rid of the densities on them. When I do this with people standing up, they'll change heights. The hair will change the way it looks sometimes. Their, their physical clothes will change colors. Oh, yeah. I, I this is for a lady that was, uh, we're back in New York at a little dessert place here. Okay, once you get up, see how your toes feel. And I'll just talk here. So we're at this dessert place, uh, uh, and she got one of these cupcakes with like an inch of frosting on it. So she's eating about half of it. And I'm looking, wondering how she could eat that personally, but it uh, wasn't really too much in judgment because that's a lot of frosting, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I said, well, let's do this decloning thing. So I did this for her. And uh, you know, it took like five minutes, right? I did this. And, and then she got the cupcake, started to bite it, and she spit it out. She goes, how could I have eaten this thing? Well, the clone wanted to eat that. Okay? And plus, her face uh, changed. So let's do our faces, okay? So let's do that here. You might feel your, your face physically moving in and out, you know, this <laughs> pumpkin head here in a minute here, you know. <laughs> And it all depends on what the makeup artist of the, uh, of, the, of the alien race is doing to you to clone your face. There we go. Now see how you're doing. How's your face feel? Feel more vibrant? Because you have more spirit energy in it. More movable? Smoother. Smoother? Okay. Okay, let, let's let's get rid of uh, a timeline for that. Okay, for more gallons. Yeah. Okay, we have clearings on the website that can help people. Uh, this one person did a lot of clearings to get this stuff off of her. A lot of it was alien stuff, and she eventually uh, felt better. She got rid of those little worms and parasitic life forms. Okay, here we go. So this is more gallons here, getting rid of the alien races that have this stuff in, embedded in you. Remember, you're dealing, my website I have a clearing, which is a nanotechnology clearing. So you're set up in your DNA to have things go off, time coded, okay, date coded, year coded, to bring forth this energy to come up and then what they're spraying or putting in the air. So I gotta, I gotta kind of rephrase this here. So if the aliens are putting in the air, okay? <laughs> Keeping it away from stuff that's physical here that you can see, okay? So what the aliens are doing is connecting this stuff to you. And that changes you. I, I can't talk about chemtrails. Okay, how's your body feeling? Feeling, feeling like, like worms leaving you? Okay, so I'll just count to 100. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 20. Since you jerked. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 30. Is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 60. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 70. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 80. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 90. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 100. There. Want to get up and just walk, see how you feel? You're shaking? Uh-huh. Better flow? Uh-huh.
Getting better? Don't, don't read. Don't read anything. You're going to be more in the trap. Yeah. Books are put out by aliens. What about when you go to, like, you know, your science and mind classes and your this is and all of that and, and everything, and, you know, you've got friends and, you know, you stop going to it and then you don't have any friends anymore and then, you know, you're kind of just like living well, by well, yourself and then you the, think your boyfriend's a clone, which I think he probably is because he doesn't have a lot going on in his head. Um, what, uh, <laughs> so, so what do you do? Yeah, what yeah, do you do? yeah, yeah, yeah. This Is path. This a cafe for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's probably why you're here. You know, the, the anti-alien cafe. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. What what happens is that people who start doing clearings. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna work on lungs next. Okay. So people who start doing the clearings will find that they don't need people as much because they're not dealing in duality. And they don't want to get triggered in more duality to put them down that rabbit hole even further. Because when you start doing clearings, especially the emotional clearing, you've got to get that emotional whole lifetime clearing. Once you get that, then you don't resonate to a lot of people's stuff, you know, which is basically gossip, right? You go into any, any restaurant or wherever people are, and you're, meh, 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 meh. well, that's gone out of you. you know, I don't need to hear all this crap, you know? So, all of a sudden, you start having more of a lonelier life, but you're more at peace because you're not being triggered. But I already have such an alone life. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're at peace, you won't care. That's yeah, you're not going to care when you're at peace. What if you like to party a lot, though? <laughs> but if you're at peace, like you won't party less. That's emotional stuff. That's emotional <laughs> stuff, yeah. That's emotional. Party's emotional. Yeah. You'll figure out a way. To live life, you know, but but you start become see the whole thing is to keep your body temple clear. So the more clearings you have, when somebody comes up to you, when I first did my initial clearing on alien critters, I did an eight-hour call on it, and I told the people, I said, you're probably not going to want to touch people or hug them or shake hands because they'll give you stuff. So uh, I did the clearings, and I think it was eight hours in length, and then people said. Yeah, but Ron, yeah, but, uh, uh, you know, they don't know how to respond because the program goes off. We've got to shake hands. I'm in business. I've got to shake hands with people. I've got to hug people. I've been doing this my whole life. And they said, well, we'll try it. So some people in New York that I was dealing with who contacted me, and there they have the subway, right? So it's almost impossible not to touch somebody when you're hanging on and sitting, right? And they said, I felt great. I went in there, and I tried to hold my space person sat next to me and they touched me and I felt all this crap come into my body. They go, shit, you know. So they had the awareness that they were contaminated or that they, they, they were cleaned out and the contamination came into them. So the whole thing is to keep your body temple, your physical body clean of all this stuff. So once you start understanding that, that's why I say shrink wrap. At least to get out of their energy field. Don't have people connect to you. Can okay. So when I hug somebody, I basically, if I do that or shake hands, my energy like gets sucked in completely. I, I'm like not even here. Like you know, I don't even have any energy at all that they can take or connect. Okay. I'm like I'm dead. Yeah, they might think I'm a clone, yeah. Yeah, they probably would, yeah. How so, do you know you're not cloned? Because I can do clone healings. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's work with lungs here, okay? okay. So we're going to work with lungs. And remember, your condition that you have here is replicated on many, 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 many time lines, lines okay? You get rid of those timelines, your condition here might go away, especially aches and pains. So here we go. I'll just do some counting because my it's getting hard to do. Well, I can do this again here. <laughs> so we're clearing timelines. And monitor your breathing.
Normally I count, but uh, sometimes I can't get the work done in time when I start counting. It takes too long. I normally count to 10 when I do each timeline crash. So I do have uh, a lot of archives, maybe over 1,000 on, on BBS Radio. Just think of BBC, but put an S on it, bbsradio.com. On my website, they're free to listen to. Go to the uh, left-hand side, navigation side, go to the very bottom, I think it'll say archives, BBS archives. Click on that, and you're going to have all these archives to listen to. The alien ones are probably uh, starting maybe about two and a half, three years ago, something like that. So you're going to start hearing more about alien stuff. Before that, I didn't deal with aliens uh, hardly at all. Live again on that tomorrow? Uh, let's see. Yeah, tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday. Okay, how's your breathing doing? Is there any improvement over here? I feel, I still feel mucus coating. Okay. Still Still tight. Okay, let's get rid of uh, mucus, okay? So. I'll do some counting here, so each time I count a number, it'll change a timeline. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, how's that feeling for everybody? Maybe a little more. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, getting, get, getting better? Yeah. I'm getting better, okay. A little more. Okay. A little deeper. Great. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. <coughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I'm processing his stuff. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. How's that doing? So that's timeline crashing, okay? How are you defining timeline? Okay, a timeline is a parallel life. You heard about parallel lives? That's a timeline. Same, I use the words interchangeably. So a parallel life uh, uh, is an abduction, okay? That's when you're living another lifetime uh, plus the one here. So abductions occur when you lose your keys. Everybody's lost keys or misplaced something. You didn't really misplace it, just that it was off in the beyondo, okay? And then you don't know where it is, and eventually it hopefully comes back to you. So you squawk a lot, where do I put my keys? And they hear you, and they go, oh, we made a mistake. Uh, our, our initial programmer here that uh, is out on this timeline, you know, needs to abduct you again so you can put the keys in your pocket or, or bring the keys down to put them someplace in your house where you normally had them so that you find them. So when you do have that situation where you have misplaced something, uh, hopefully they will be able to bring them back, bring back what you lost. Another thing is when a car appears next to you or behind you or disappears. That's when things happen too. Well, like out in the middle of the country. I was in like farming area. No cars for miles. You get to the stoplight. All, all the corners have a car. Yeah, so they must have beamed them in there to go to their next location. So I haven't had anything, I haven't heard of anybody where a car actually crashed on top of somebody yet. <laughs> you know, but, you know, that's, that would be pretty, pretty rough. Uh, but normally what happens is you're driving and uh, uh, you're, you want to turn off on a certain exit, which you've done your whole life, right? And then all of a sudden, you're getting close to it. You kind of yawn, don't feel quite right, but you don't know this, but you maybe yawn, feel a little spaced out. You know, you're not really too conscious of what's happening. 
and you drive right on past your off-ramp. Well, what happened is you got abducted. So they create the hologram in front of you if you just drive in your car. And you see the car next to you, you see the scenery, you see all the different uh, uh, trees and whatever around, all the cars in front of you. And then in about 10 minutes, they bring you back down again. And then you kind of like wake up and you're driving and you go, wow, what happened? You know, my off-ramp is way back here. How, what, you know, I missed it. Oh, my stupid person, I was daydreaming or something, right? Well, that's when you weren't here. Uh, what they do to you when you're up there is, is hard to say what they're doing. You know, they can do anything. But that happens. Or you're driving your car and you're at a stop sign or a signal and you want to turn, whatever. Or you're driving and you look, you know, to be cautious, right? Nothing's there and you start to make your maneuver, whatever that's going to be. And all of a sudden you hear a horn and, God, there's a car right next to you. The guy's yelling at you because you cut him off or something. And they weren't there. The street was clear. Or you look in the rear view mirror, nobody's there. And then all of a sudden you look again and there's a car on your back bumper and you're looking and there's, maybe you see a half mile on down the road, nothing's there. And all of a sudden you look again and there's a car there. Where'd it come from? Well, they just got dropped in here. They, they copy and pasted a timeline where they were living, driving, from driving into their billboard, you know, and they put them down here. Ron, don't they generate it with giant computers? Yeah, yeah, they have lots of computers, yeah. You have to remember, we have computer technology here that we have, right? adding programs, changing programs, copying and pasting, Photoshop. Well, they have the same thing, probably a much more elaborate. Why don't they just do it when we're asleep? Why do they have to like... They, they also do it when you're asleep. Dreams. Oh, that's your dreams. That's your deja vu. So when you have a dream, you're just bringing back a timeline that you physically saw, and all timelines are real. Another way of stating that is you hear somebody predicting something, or you go to a psychic reader and they go, oh, this is going to happen you know, or whatever. Well, that's real. That does happen. Okay? I had people who, uh, when we had the, uh, the tsunami in Japan, people said to me, they said, Ron, I was there. And I have recall, I'm watching TV, and I was there looking out of that a building that I saw on TV, watching this thing coming. Well, they were there on another timeline. And they have all the emotions, and they bring it back here. There are some aliens that in their spaceships aren't, not all of them, but some of them are living outside of time, are they not? No, all, all the, I don't think so. Okay. Possibly yes, but, but aliens live on timelines, and the master <coughs> of timelines, master of time. That's why, that's why you've, and you can see how often we say the word time here, right? That's a key word, okay? Uh, how many have seen uh, numbers like 10-10, 11-11? constantly. That's the program. So, so you have to realize, why do you automatically look at a clock to see 1111? Right. Okay, it doesn't make any sense to you, right? No, why don't you look at, at 1110? Well, what they do is they have their program resets, okay, we'll say, okay? So they go, okay, you're hooked up to 1111, so let's see. Oh, it's, oh, there she is, okay. We'll push the button here, and all of a sudden your body goes, zzzz, and Yep, yep, ah, 11-11, I see it. Oh, we got her. She's hooked up to our program. Validation. Okay? Um, are they hooked up to our, pro the, our programs of the people also, or not the aliens? Aliens give you all your programs. Aliens give you all of your thoughts. So they're outside of the program then? They're controlling you, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, so all, all of your thoughts are from aliens. So a psychic is reading a timeline that you have from your, your, your astrological chart at your birth, and they're reading your auric field to tell you what you're going through next in your life. Ron, <coughs> oh, well, I was going to ask you, so what if you see 1111 and you're like, <laughs> what do you see? Well, I go out to. What do you say? What catch about it, you bastard? Uh, I don't know. What I do is go out to the aliens if I see that. Say what? I go after them. We can't do that. Okay. No, you can't do that, but I go after them. We can't do that. You don't have the horsepower. Okay? <laughs> just know that you don't want to hopefully see it again, but just know that you're programmed. So if you see, okay, so what I'll do is, is show you how, how you are programmed. I'm gonna, uh, I want you all to say your name out loud. 
Okay. I'm, I'm going to take away the vowels in your name because they tap into the vowels. Here we go. Uh, eliminating the A, E, I, O, and U. Now say your name out loud. Okay. Does it feel different to you? Feel like just a word rather than your own identity? I'll do it again. A, E, I, O, U. There. Okay, and say your name, and it should feel like just, uh, just a word. Okay, now you don't use your middle name that much, probably, right? Unless you're using your middle name and you don't use your first name. So say the other name if you have one, okay? Lynn Okay, A, E, I, O, and U. Now say the name again. Lynn Okay, it should probably feel less to you because they're not tracking you with that name, Okay. So they only track you to what they can connect you with. That's what the government does. Yeah, and the, so I'm on the website, I have uh, uh, a NATO clearing. And the NATO clearing, I should probably change the name of it, but that's what it started off as. And that's designed to, you put your name in, and nicknames, and whatever name you go by, or have gone by, and you can also put in numbers in there, phone number, address, you know, things like this here. And it can help to eliminate that energy that you're being tracked with. So, any questions? Do you do water charging? Yeah, water charging. Everybody have water? Mango makes all their total invisible technology, doesn't it? So if you don't have water, there's probably some outside there. Tell them where it is. Mm -hmm. you know, why yeah. On another time, why? What if mm -hmm. I lose a bunch of money and it never comes back? <laughs> yeah, well, I tell my girlfriend where her money was. She called me and she says, I lost my money. And I told her right away where it was. I say, you're You said you didn't want to talk about chemtrails. I've heard, I've heard that expression. Hmm? Say it like 30 seconds. Chemtrails. I can't. I can only talk about how far I'm protected. Hmm. And I don't have any data. See, I live in the moment. Okay, I know what chemtrails are. I can see them. I don't like them. Okay, but I don't have any information from source energy about chemtrails. But isn't that like a clone that comes in that doesn't have any background information about their past? No. I'll, I live in the moment. Okay. I'll put you guys in, the, in where I live in after we do this here. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, do you want dolphins? <coughs> yes. Bring in the dolphin energy. This, this is source energy of dolphins. So, I'll count to five. One, two, three, four, and five. And it'll just take a little bit here, probably 10 seconds here. And the water will change. There we go. Drink your water. And almost always, <coughs> the water will go down much easier than normal. You won't be thinking what the water is. Mine is like a little fizzy. Yeah? I'll tell you one story about water. One person gave me an email. I first started doing water charging on conference calls. And uh, uh, I do water charging and light chip healing. And uh, I do those on Wednesdays at 5.30. So uh, when I first started doing it, got an email from a lady. She says, Ron, really strange occurrence happened. Uh, you know, I do seven containers of water. People normally get a half a gallon to a gallon. We do each bottle separately. It takes about a half an hour, five minutes per bottle. So I says, well, I got my Tuesday water, and, and the bottom was a bubble. Now, these are all sealed bottles from the store, right? And a lot of times, your bottles do have bubbles in them, <coughs> you know, right? So she says, but I had a big bubble on the bottom the size of a quarter. So I thought it was kind of trippy. So she pours her water into a glass. That bubble now appears in the bottom of her glass. And now another bubble appears <laughs> in her, her water bottle. <laughs> and so she, that was kind of neat to hear that. But most people, the water will taste different from day to day. So how long does it last? It lasts for the day. Oh, just for the day. And so each, each bottle of water works, 
consecutively, uh, you know, or, or is it's used uh, according to the next one. So you have you have water. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, and it's doing that right here for you. Okay. There we go. Enjoy your waters. It tastes different. Does it go down easily? Normally, normally the water just comes into your mouth, and your body. For most water, you, you put water into your mouth, and your body kind of like analyzes it. Might take a, a half a second or less, and then it doesn't. It doesn't really spit it out unless it's really, really bad. But it, it is forced to drink it because it needs water. With this water, you just put it in your mouth and it's down your throat instantly. Okay, so this has uh, light codes into it that your body needs right now, this second. Okay? So when I do a day of water, it'll have <coughs> codes that's changeable in that water to give you energy for that day, what you need. And the next bottle of water takes off from the previous one of what you need. Okay, so people normally will buy bottled water uh, because they're sealed, unless they have a big refrigerator they can use their own water filters and stuff. Uh, so let's, uh, let me put you on my timeline here. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is put you on to zero time on your timeline that you're living on. Okay? And you can see what it's like. So I'll, I'll count to five to do that. So one, two, three, four, five. There, now you're in zero time. So this is where time is off. And this is where you would normally do your creative work when time stops for you. <coughs> Maybe you're doing, uh, you know, artwork or sculpturing or painting or something, or, you know, maybe you're a construction worker and you're banging nails in and you're just having a great time and time stops. They say, okay, it's lunchtime. You go, I just got to work here. I started at 8 in the morning and now it's noon. Wow, what happened, you know? Well, that's because you're in the flow with your spirit. You're being creative, okay? This is where you would be normally, where time is stopped on the timeline. And when, and when you're in this flow right here, you probably have very little alien stuff happening to you because you're with your spirit. You're in source energy. You can still think. You can still hammer nails, and you can still do your sculpturing. Like I said earlier, you know, people say, how do I think? Well, you're, you're using your body. There's no language for thinking, okay? You're just acting and doing. <coughs> that, that makes sense to you all? Yes. Right. Okay. So you do this all the time, you just don't know it. And I'll put you on to where I live, which is in no time whatsoever. This is source energy's time. <coughs> It'll be slightly different. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. There. Now you're in my time. And if you notice, uh, there'll be a slight difference, but nothing is attached to you whatsoever. As you look at people around you here, they just look like something. You know, you don't really even know typically what they are. You know that they're humans, but you don't have a recognition. There's no emotional energy. There's nothing that, you know, if this person's wearing different color shoes or something or no shoes or whatever, or you don't have any, any, any way to analyze right now. Am I correct? Yeah. Everything is just neutral. This is where I live. Okay? So that's why I can see clones. That's why I can do all the work that I do because I'm definitely not attached to this reality. So what's that phrase being, uh, uh, living in the world but not of it? That's where I live. What about the sun, dark and light? That's not, it's an illusion. It isn't really dark and light. <coughs> oh, you, even our physical sun and stuff? Yeah, well, that, that's here. But uh, everything here is a program which could be an illusion. And somehow you're living a life in that program and you need to get out of the program to get untrapped from it. So what do we do when we're out? Well, you eventually want to get back to being in true source energy, true light. Remember, the darkness created the false light, right? which is what you're reading about in all the books that you have. So all of your metaphysical books, even if you open them up or not, have keywords. Remember how I changed the vowels in your name and took them out and it doesn't relate to you? 
Well, there's words that are in everything that's going to tap you into something. <coughs> Just when I start a book, I can, sometimes I can't, stay, I can't take the energy out at all. Yeah, but even if, even if you did like the book, you're being hooked up through words Okay, in that book, which are keywords, just like your computer doing a Google search, right? You type in a keyword, what you want to find, and that's going to connect you to an alien race. So that's kind of hard for people to take sometimes because they go, I, I, I watch TV, I, you know, I get the newspaper every day. Well, that's hooking you up. And that's all, and that goes into your cell memory, which eventually comes into judgment. Uh, you can tell how far along you are, especially if you had clearings, is just go to a movie theater and pick one that uh, has a lot of emotions in it, right? Uh, whatever that would be for you. It could be maybe watching uh, some kind of alien movie where the aliens are coming and killing people. Or maybe you go see a movie where they're, they're maybe uh, hunting, killing animals or something. Well, for myself, uh, None of that's going to really affect me. It does a little bit sometimes, especially for animals. Humans I don't really care too much about. <laughs> I have to be honest. Animals I have a little more compassion for, but humans, I mean, well, anyway. <laughs> I really can't say that, but, uh, you know, the, uh, so, so, so uh, but when I watch something, you know, when I go to the theater to watch a movie, I'm just getting intel. I want to see what they're talking about, okay? And then I watch other people as maybe they're doing something that's bad, and people are like, <laughs> ah, you know, all these emotions. Well, that's stored inside of their body. I'm just watching just to see what the technology is, uh, what the intel would be for me to help out other people here. So I don't react to things that much. Unless I get, you know, my DNA really, you know, imprinted somehow, you know, but my DNA is basically erased. And that's the magic conception. Because if I had DNA in me, I would be taking on all of your stuff. And that would manifest into my body. I, I'd be dead by now. I probably have at least a thousand people, you know, all the time doing clearings on my website. I have a lot of free clearings that people do. They do the gray sky clearings to get rid of the alien ship clouds and to change your weather. Uh, I have satellite stuff up there to get rid of the satellites that the aliens transmitting to you. I have a head connector clearing. I have a brand new one, the Galactic Federation clearing, to get those things off of your butt. I mean, uh, you, you did that, didn't you? It's only, have you done that or anybody have done that? Can, can you explain what happened? You know, because it, it, it's a, a clearing. What happened was, about two weeks ago, uh, a lady came on my BBS radio program and it was the February the 1st, so luckily it's a good time. I can remember that date, okay? And so she had an awful sore throat. She could hardly talk. And so I did a regular quick clearing on her, and it helped maybe just a little bit. For me, it didn't do much at all, but it helped slightly, maybe 5%. So I thought, well, I'll do an alien clearing. And I thought, well, I'll do a Glanta Federation clearing, the Space Brothers, right? So, uh, heaven forbid. <laughs> but, but, uh, so so, so no, no, not at all. Not at all. That's where they come from. That's your spiritual hierarchy. Okay? That's the entrapment. Okay? And so, uh, so I did a clearing on that. And five minutes, you know, or less, she was almost talking normal. And she was like, sounded like she was ready to die. Her voice is all, you, you can listen to the archive. And so then, you know, after that, I put up the clearing a day later on the website for a free clearing for people. And people have com commented that they just felt so much lighter, uh, energies off them. And do you want to explain maybe what you experienced? I actually didn't, haven't experienced very much from it. But I keep continuing to do them because I know that I've had contact in the past. Mm-hmm. And, and that's waiting to see when it's, I'm really going to notice it. Yeah, so that's how that, that's the, that, that, that energy is connecting to you. That's our Galactic Federation of light, of what, of, you know, they may change it. I first started off talking about the Galactic Federation. Boy, did I get flack on that from people. Ashtar Command, all this crap. In fact, on my website, a Alien Attack page, I have Ashtar Command listed. Do that clearing. Man, you're going to find all kinds of stuff leave you. Okay? And uh, that's a big one, okay. 
So get that get that energy off you, off you, and so all that stuff out there is is uh, and they channel through the people, you know, and connecting everybody up. You know, the Space Brothers are coming. They're going to help you out. Like I said, they're going to help you out. You know, it's coming. Have landings coming down here. Going to save humanity. What happened last week? You know, you know, it's always that carrot in front of your nose. Yeah, and then then what they do is they. Some channelers who channel this information, they'll talk about, oh, man, it's going to happen in one week from now. And you go, oh, I can't wait. And, man, you're, you're just waiting, and you hear all this stuff about how the government's going to change and how everybody's going to have a million dollars in the bank account, and they just can't wait. And, then, and you get all excited, right? And then the day comes, you're going to cop in at 10 o'clock in the morning, and you're on your computer waiting, looking, the eyeballs popping out, waiting, to, and nothing happens. And 1 o'clock, it comes to, oh, we're sorry, but so-and-so happened, and this alien race took out this other alien race, and this happened here, nothing happened. And now you're really pissed off at the other alien race. So first you went from your really glad, excited energy, right? And they're just sucking off of you, man. They gave you that script to suck off all your energy. You're emitting this stuff. And then all of a sudden, now it's a disappointment. Now you're pissed off. And they're all another feeding frenzy. Take this energy off these humans, okay? Steal, steal that person's soul, their spirit. Do they do this all over the universe? Well, they do it here. I can only talk about here. Okay. Can we do that here? Or is that Are we done? Yeah. Okay. So I guess we're done. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. I don't know if I covered all that I needed to cover, but uh, I could go outside of the lobby there. and If you have any additional questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Okay? Yeah, he needs three clearings. <coughs> Let me get this off here. It might be still rolling.